Rock Island Alderman has been the bridesmaid twice before. Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin has lost all four of its previous state championship clashes. It could be a high scoring affair, but somebody is going home happy with their first state title. The Pioneers and the Cyclones, next on the IHSA TV Network. Stadium for day two of the 2005 state high school football finals. We're just minutes away from the start of the Class 5A championship game between the Cyclones of Sacred Heart Griffin out of Springfield and the Pioneers of Alleman out of Rock Island. We'll talk about that game in just a moment. Uh, just to recap yesterday, your winners in Class 1A, the Aquin Bulldogs, Class 2A, the Dakota Indians, and Class 3A, the Bureau Valley Storm, and in Class 4A, the Highlanders of Driscoll Catholic. Of course, today, as I mentioned, the 5A game will start in just a few minutes, followed by the 6A game between Normal Community and Morris, the 7A game between Chicago, Mount Carmel, and Prospect, and the Class 8A game tonight between Maine South and Lincoln Way East. But first things first, we're going to talk about the Class 5A game. It shapes up to be a very interesting matchup between Sacred Heart Griffin and Alleman out of the Quad Cities in Rock Island. The Pioneers, both teams outstanding. And for the two guys who are going to talk about this matchup, we will bring you and introduce you to the gentleman who will call the game, Tom Stocker and Lee Turnbow. Take it away, guys. All right, Mike, thank you very much. In this game, two teams have combined for six different trips to the championship game but not one state championship between the two schools or somebody will win their first state title here this afternoon. And Lee, in this game, you couldn't find a bigger contrast in styles offensively. No, you couldn't, Tom. And the thing is, I'm looking forward to this game. Is Rock Island, you know Rock Island is going to run the ball. They're going to try to pound the ball. Sacred Heart, two-minute offense, babe. They can score from anywhere on the field. It's going to be run, pass. I'm looking forward to it today. All right, let's see how these two teams made it here to the finals at Memorial Stadium in Champaign. First of all, for Alleman, a exciting double overtime win over Montini. Then they won on the road, won at Johnsburg, then defeated Lamont by three, and then got a very, very big fumble recovery on the three-yard line and scored with just a minute ago to beat Cahokia in the semifinals to make it here. Meanwhile, for the Cyclones, they beat Chatham Glenwood for the second time in the season. Then look at that. They led Morton 55-7 at halftime. Then a big battle against rival Kankakee McNamara. And then North Chicago went down and lost by 10, 29 to 19. Well, in this ball game, Rock Island Alleman comes in with a, 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 a wishbone offense, as Lee said. It's not often a quarterback is your leading rusher, but it's the case with Andrew Doyle. Well, he's one of the key players for the Rock Island guys today. Andrew Doyle, the quarterback number nine, he's the one who runs the show. He's the guy who's got to make great decisions and get the offense going against Sacred Heart. Defensively, All-State or defensive end Greg Weeble anchors their defense, and he's a big play guy, great pass rusher. He's going to have to have a great pass rush against Sacred Heart. He's got to put pressure on the quarterback. Not a lot of stats, but they don't ask him to do stat work. They ask him to put pressure on the quarterback, contain him in the pocket, make sure that he doesn't go unchecked. Sacred Heart Griffin lost seven all-conference players from last year's team. So this year's team is a bit of a surprise, but Bobby Brenheisen, a coach's son, well, no surprise there. He's been, he's been their stud. Brenheisen, a coach's all-state guy. Look at him. He's just an outstanding individual. 2,800 yards passing, 35 touchdowns. Just he makes the offense go for Sacred Heart. Three years ago, Sacred Heart Griffin just ran out of time. Otherwise, they might have beaten Joliet Catholic. On that field that day was Andrew Colling. He was a freshman starting linebacker then. And he's a key defensive player for Sacred Heart. Started as a freshman. He's a guy who makes all the tackles in the middle. He's the emotional leader of the defense for Cyclones. You know, in this game, Rock Island, I would tend to think, would like to have some possession time. They like to run the clock, but that doesn't really matter much to Sacred Heart Griffin. It, it doesn't really, but if you're Rock Island, you've got to control the clock. You've got to do the things that make you successful. That's run the ball. Also in this contest, uh, Again, somebody will win their first title. Let's meet these two teams as we go to stadium announcer Jeff Ritson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups for the Class 5A state championship football game. First, the defense for Rock Island Alleman. And nose guard number 70, Sean McKnight. At tackle, number 72, David Brickner. At tackle, number 77, Cameron Rummins. At in, number 89, Patrick Dalton. At end, number 95, Greg Weeble. 
At linebacker, number 31, Matt Frediger. At linebacker, number 26, Andrew Bryonis. At strong safety, number 24, Kevin Tracy. At free safety, number nine, Andrew Doyle. At cornerback, number 22, Michael Ader. And at cornerback, number five, Patrick Taylor. The Pioneers are coached by Dave DeJager. And now the starting offense for Sacred Heart Griffin. At quarterback, number seven, Bobby Brenniason. At running back, number one, Andre Pendergrass. At wide receiver, number nine, Alex Reavy. At wide receiver, number 37, Keenan Gilpin. At wide receiver, number 95, Jeff Sanders. At wide receiver, number 83, Matt Cummins. At tackle, number 70, Matt Mast. At guard, number 50, Dane Zintgraff. At center, number 66, Andrew Boba. At guard, number 52, James Davis. And at tackle number 64, Nick Taley. The Cyclones are coached by Ken Leonard. Championship finals, the first of four coming your way from Memorial Stadium today. For Rock Island, their keys of the game, obviously you run the wishbone. It's whatever that quarterback decides to do with the football. Well, it's Andrew Durrell. He's going to make great decisions against Sacred Heart defense. No one to pitch it to Ader. No one to give it to Frutiger. He's got to be the man in charge. Quarter and change. We talked about it a little bit before. You've got to sit there, control the ball against Sacred Heart. Eat up as much of the clock as you can. You can't afford to change possessions with Sacred Heart. And Reavy rules. He's a go-to guy for Sacred Heart, the guy that Brent Heisen likes to get the ball to. They've got to know where he is on the field at all times. Meanwhile, for the Cyclones of Sacred Heart Griffin, their keys to the contest, Bobby B in the band. Bobby B is the guy who makes the offense go. A coach's kid, a smart kid. He'll make great decisions on his feet, on the fly. Outfox the option. You know Rock Island's going to run the option. you got to sit there and defend and make your rules and keys read all day long. Pound Pendergrass. I think Rock Island's going to take away the receivers. Pendergrass could be key for him today. All right, back deep, Mike Edwards, and he'll take it from the three. And Oliman stops him shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. A return of 17 yards, and that's where the Cyclones will set up shop. You take a look, Rock Island over in the Quad Cities, while Sacred Heart Griffin in our state capital down there in Interstate 55 in Springfield. A quick huddle over on the sidelines with Ken Taylor as they call the play there, and then they go right to an unusual thing right there, Lee, right off the get-go. They like to do that. They'll speed up the run some no hell. They'll run a lot of different formations today. The pass is complete to Reavy. Fumble. He fumbles the football. And... The Cyclones recover at the 22-yard line. Well, they knew where Reavy was, the Pioneers' defense, and he coughed it up, but fortunately, Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin gets it back. And that's the thing that you got to do. When you're sitting there in the first series of the ball game, you're hyperventilating, you're very excited. You got to slow down. As you look at the weather conditions, 40 degrees, a little bit better than it was last night. Winds 5 to 16 could play a, a factor in the ball game today. And the wind looking right now like it's switching out of the south. Out of the shotgun, the handoff goes to Andre Pendergrass. He played as a freshman on special teams against Joliet Catholic. He advances the ball out to the 28-yard line and will bring up third down for Sacred Heart Griffin. Only one loss between these two teams, Solomon 12-1. and one. They lost at the very start of the season, their first game of the year, losing to Addison Driscoll. Oh, by the way, Driscoll just won their fifth consecutive state championship last night. 
But since then, Alleman has not lost. The Cyclones undefeated. Great catch hauled in by Jeff Sanders. And he's got a first down up to the 46-yard line, a gain of 18. Sanders, a very big target as you see a starting offensive line for Sacred Heart. Mass sent, grab Bova, Davis, and Taylor. They've got to be key for Sacred Heart today. Backfield, we talked about Brent Heisen and Pendergrass. I think he's going to be a key. Reeve already made one big play. Don't forget about Gilpin. Sanders, Indiana recruit, big tight end across the middle. So it's first down from the 46. Wide open is Reeve, and he's into pioneer territory at the 36-yard line. Another first down for Sacred Heart Griffin. That gain, 18 yards. As you see, the uh, Rock Island Allman defense, they've got such a control. Reeve, you see Dalton, Brickner, McKnight, Rummins, and Weeble. Frutiger and Brioni, he's got a guy he's going both ways. Frutiger has got to step up. Ader, Taylor, Tracy, and Doyle. Doyle, of course, the quarterback. He's going both ways. It doesn't make a difference this time of season. So it's first down. And a leaping catch by Sanders. And tackled immediately at the 30-yard line. Stopped on the play after a gain of about seven yards. Sanders, that's his second catch coming into the ball game. He had 49 catches for 537 yards and two touchdowns. He's a kind of a security blanket for Brent Heise. And the guy, if they double cover Reeve, you can always throw it to Sanders. You saw Patrick Dalton, their defensive end, as they line up with five up on the line of scrimmage. The handoff sweeping around Keenan Gilpin. He was the man in motion, and he is brought down at the 25-yard line. Another first down for Sacred Heart Griffin. That time the defense for Rock Island, especially Patrick Dalton, number 89, defensive end, does a real nice job of maintaining contain and turning that play inside. If he doesn't make that play, they go outside for a big gain. As you see Brent Heisen out there calling the play, looking on the wristband, trying to decipher the coach's signals. This drive began on the 18. This is the eighth play of this drive for the Cyclones. Brent Heisen will keep it. He coughs it up, and Oliman comes up with it. The first big break goes to the Pioneers as they stop Sacred Heart Griffin at the Oliman 23-yard line. Looks like Sean McKnight right there, number 70, comes with that fondle. But Brent Heisen didn't see the guy coming from the, the blind side, knocks the ball, hits him right in the elbow. Big early, as you see right here, running from the shotgun. Bad snap, now he's going to tuck it and run. And she's carrying the ball kind of loose and watch right there from the side. Gets hit right there by 72 on the ground. McKnight recovers for Rock Island. Big play early. David Brickner, the defensive tackle, is the one that created the fumble. So here comes Andrew Doyle out of the wishbone. The give goes to the fullback. Frutiger straight ahead for a gain up to the 27-yard line. Picked up about four. There's the offensive line. Brickner, the cornerstone of that offensive line, a two-year starter. The backfield with Doyle, Ader, Tracy, the son of longtime head coach Mike Tracy, Frutiger, Weeble, and Keegan McGuire. Have an official's timeout on the field. It'll be second down and six yards to go. First quarter action, a little equipment adjustment right there. Looks like a linebacker Mike Edwards. So he gets that strap all tucked up and, oh, why not? Go ahead. <laughs> Paint the body, come out without the shirt on, keeping. This is their leading ground gainer, Doyle, and he's got a lot of room to go. In the Cyclone territory to the 39-yard line after a gain of 34 yards on the keep. Andrew Doyle, a 1,000-yard rusher on the year. As you see, Sacred Heart defense with Darren Moore, Johnson, Taylor, and Zentgraff. Linebackers, we talked about Colin Starr as a freshman. Edwards going to have to sit there and key the fullback. The defensive backs, Cavish, Silvaggio, Rakers, and Gilpin. Got to sit there in assignment aware against the option for Rock Island. From the 39 of Sacred Heart Griffin. Handoff goes to Kevin Tracy. Not much room there on the right side. Stop for no gain at the 39-yard line. What we'll see from Sacred Heart, and 
Talking to Coach Leonard earlier in the week, he says, we're going to put six and seven guys on a line scrimmage and try to make Rock Island throw to beat us. You've got to be very, very assignment and very disciplined to play against this. So they're going to try to stuff the run and make Allman throw to beat them. Andrew Doyle gives the first man through. That's Frutiger, the 6'1", 211-pound senior who's been hobbled by an ankle problem through the regular season, but has allowed him, he's really come along very well and been more to full health as they've gone to the playoff. You see, they average 288 yards a game, Oliver does. They average five passing plays a game. But you got a third and long here, and this is what Sacred Heart Griffin's defense wants to see. More of these third and longs, perhaps forcing Oliver to pass the football. They don't, there's a fumble, and it's recovered by the Pioneers. And Ben Mearsman, the offensive guard, the 6'3 junior, recovers it. And you see right here the contact, good ride by the fullback, and look at Sunkraft come in, bam, smacks him, caused the fumble, recovered by Rock Island, but it's going to be a hard-hitting physical defense. you got to sit there and have your interior lineman and the inside linebackers key the fullback. You must stop Frutiger to have success against the option. Brings up a fourth and five. You don't gain that much, really, by punting. Maybe 13 yards. It. You go for it. Just about five minutes gone. Frutiger straight ahead to the 30-yard line. Looks like he's about a yard shy. And looks like the Cyclones of Sacred Heart Griffin will take over on downs. Indeed, they do. And either way, that was a good call by Coach uh, for Rock Island. You got to go for it right there. You're not going to get any field position. Establish Frutiger. He's only short by a yard. But that tells me if you're a Rock Island fan, you're a Rock Island player, yeah, we're going to be aggressive today. We're not going to back down from anybody. We're going to go for it. Also force the Cyclones defense to show uh, show what they do on fourth. Yeah, situation. you want to see if they had a blitz pack up that you can sit there and use or, or later in the game. See some kind of keys or techniques that you can take advantage of later. So Bobby Brenheisen out of the shotgun from the 30-yard line. The pass taken by Reavy. No, it skipped. It hit the turf. Reavy tried to sell it. Reavy, he's special, says head coach Ken Leonard. This is his first year playing football. Take a look as uh, Sacred Heart Griffin has lived more with the pass. You see pretty much an even balance between rushing plays 27 a game and passing plays 23 a game. In fact, they tend to pass this year to set up the run. Brent Heisen, 6'1 junior. A little inside shovel pass. It is Keenan Gilpin up to the 41-yard line and an apparent first down for the Cyclones. They give you so many formations, so many options to defend if you're Rock Island, Sacred Heart does. You've got to sit there and be key oriented. That time, a little shuffle pass to Gilpin inside. He thought he was going to run the option to the right. He actually shuffle passes up inside. You see Coach Leonard there. He's going to use every play available right now to see what Rock Island is going to do against him. But that's a good play call. First down from the 41-yard line for the Cyclones. Leaping catch at the Pioneer 44-yard line by Jeff Sanders. Sanders, a gain of 16 yards, using every bit of that 6-foot, 5-inch frame. Nice job right there by Brent Heisen. Again, he throws a nice ball. He gives his receivers an opportunity to catch it where only they can catch it. Now you see the tail of the tape inside the trenches. Sacred Heart offensive line, 219 pounds. Rock Island, 247 pounds. Their run stuffers in there. These guys get great push up the middle. Already, Sanders, two catches, 25 yards. Inside, this is Pendergrass. As he is brought down at the 43-yard line after a gain of a yard, Pendergrass, 618 yards on the year, averaging five yards a carry, scored 17 touchdowns this season. They kind of use him as a change-up to keep the defense honest, keep the pass rush in check. Pendergrass, of course, only 123 carries, as you said, 618 yards, but he does keep the defense honest. That's Robbie Mosher, the 5'10 sophomore, who will go in as a wide receiver. They spread him out again. And in and out of the hands of Reavy at the 40-yard line. That's a catch he makes 9 out of 10 times. And the thing you like to watch about him, watch him on film as he did this week, 
watch him earlier in the game. He catches the ball with his hands. Not a lot of high school kids do that. You see Brent Heisen getting a sign. You see him. Look at that year. 2,893 yards, 35 touchdown passes. And you can tell, look at the touchdown interception ratio, 35 to 10, a coach's kid. And I like coach's kids playing for me because they're smart and they don't wilt under pressure. Third down and long. Brent Heisen under pressure, tucks it and runs. Oh, what a stick inside as he got to about the 38-yard line. That was Michael Later coming up from the secondary and making a nice, good, firm, open field tackle. Rock on, these guys are are very well conditioned. You see Brent Heisen getting a snap. Nick just give him an opportunity to look down the field. Nothing open, comes in and watch Ader come up here and just lay a pop on him right there and make him and get him down right there. Look at the shoulder drive in there. Great tackle by Ader. Ader, of course, broke up a pass at the goal line in overtime against Montini and also had a the big fumble recovery against Cahokia on the Cahokia three to set up the Pioneers game winning touchdown in the semis. It's a first down catch and then some down to the 18 yard line. Big fourth down catch by Jeff Sanders. 20 yards on the reception. And just a big rumbling tight end. Indiana's going to get a great one next year as he goes down there and plays Big Ten football. And right now, he's a safety blanket for Brent Heisen. Revy off to kind of a so so start, but Sanders has been doing great things, especially down the hash marks. Little in out, little out route, does a nice job. Well, Sanders at 6-5 gives him a height mismatch in the secondary against the Pioneer defense. Sweeping around Keenan Gilpin. Stretched out nicely by the Pioneers defense and he is forced out of bounds across the way by the strong safety Kevin Tracy. And the guy who really makes that play for Rock Island is Patrick Dalton, the defensive end. We talked about you've got to be so assignment aware when you're playing Sacred Heart. That time he strung that play out and did a nice job of sitting there turning. You see Kevin Tracy sitting there calling the defense. It's just a chess match. When you go against pass offense and run offense, two different things, guys that you don't see that much during the regular season, it's got to be adjustment, adjustment, adjustment. Now remember last drive on the eighth play, the Cyclones coughed it up. This is their ninth play of this drive. Caught, touchdown, the catch by Jeff Sanders, his third catch, third touchdown catch of the season, a 15-yard scoring play. Just runs a skinny inside post route, catch the ball with his hands. What a throw by Brent Heisen, puts it up over the safety guy covering him. Watch this throw by Brent Heisen, gets it. He knows exactly right now where he's going with that football. Look at him, look right, look right at Sanders. Look at this throw, look at that catch with the hands. Catch with the hands, not with the body, up over the defender. Touchdown, Sacred Heart. I mentioned the mismatch, 6-5 Sanders against the 5-10 Patrick Taylor at cornerback for the Pioneers. In the kick to point after, Mike Edwards, he has made 60 out of 63, make it 61 out of 64. So, 4.15 left in the opening quarter. An early 7-0 lead for Griffin as we hear from your network sponsors. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. The Cyclones strike first, 7-0. The play, nine plays, 70 yards, nine plays on the drive, 15-yard scoring play. A very short kick by Edwards. And it's received by a Cyclone. And did it go the 10 yards? It did. It's anybody's ball after it goes 10. There's a flag on the play, so we'll see the side judge threw the flag. So we'll see what that's all about. The flag thrown right at the spot where the ball came down at about the 37, 38 yard line. Referee Peter King from Palatine and his crew discussing it. Again, that's a free ball. It is a free ball. And the thing I like about this, there's no replay in high school. You know, these guys would huddle. They go over to the tent. They look inside, replay. Let's see what everybody's on the same page. You see Rock on coaching staff over there. Penalty is against the Cyclones. Interfering with a fair catch. A fair catch. There's our crew, Peter King, the man in the white hat with Denny Doyle, John Dacey, Fred Allman, and Rich Biederman, Jr., the men in the striped shirts, and this is a big reward for them for their work throughout the course of the season, getting to call the state championship game. As you take a look at offensive guard Ben Mearsman and company, 
And this will be a re-kick. And you know, for the officials, it's just as much excitement as it is for the players because right now. On Springfield, the penalty is declined. All going to take the ball at the spot of or the fair catch. Penalty is declined. And so Allman will take it at the 38-yard line. And they get great field position. Great field position. We were mentioning, Tom, that it is a great reward for the officials as well because they work through the playoffs and they advance every game just like the players do. So Andrew Doyle, who is heading to Oklahoma University on a baseball scholarship. Guarantee he's got a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. So he can throw when he needs to. He keeps on the option, and he's got room to run in the Cyclone territory to the 45-yard line on a first down for the Pioneers, a gain of 17. Doyle, a nice job of riding the fullback, Frutiger up the middle, and right now you see the defensive ends for Sacred Heart collapse, and watch the fake, pulls it out, now watch, cuts it up, gets a great block there, and as soon as he turns up, he's got 10 yards of pop. Watch him cover up that ball. Nice job of coaching right there, that's a coaching point, two hands on the ball, and you're about to get contact. Plus, he did a great job of selling that fake to the fullback. That's the key in that triple option. And again, he keeps, but he's hit and brought down for no gain. He is stopped by the strong safety, Bobby Rakers, the 6'1 senior. Mike Edwards also on that tackle for Sacred Heart, but you've got to sit there one false move on an option team, especially that runs, runs it as well as Rock Island. You're going to be looking six the other way. Remember when everybody was running the wishbone back with late 70s, early now, 80s? Now everybody runs a little form of it, double wing, using option attack. A lot of high school teams run that. So it'll be second down and 10. Andrew Doyle, 6'3", senior. He's run for over 1,000 yards this year. But this time the pitch, Kevin Tracy thrown for a loss back at the 47-yard line. And it'll bring up third and long. Bobby Rakers from the outside back position comes up, makes that play for Sacred Heart. And he had the pitch man on the play, comes up, covers the pitch man, forces it in, makes a good open field tackle. Look at that line, 225 for Rock Island, 219 for Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart's got very good pursuit on the defensive front side of the football, and they're going to sit there and go sideline to sideline against you. Sacred Heart Griffin ran basically a 40 defense through the regular season. Towards the end of the year, they were having trouble against the run. Here, Doyle wants to throw, wide open, the catch made by Kevin Tracy, and he's gone for the touchdown. 47 yards. I told you he can throw the football. They throw when they have to. And the thing is, that's something they saw on film right there, Tom, because they only throw five passes a game on average. They must have saw something on film because he was open, wide open, Tracy. Look at Doyle looking right down, and he's got him wide open. Look at this. There's nobody behind him. All he's got to do, oh, bobble a little bit, take it in, almost stumbled. But, boy, once you see the orange of Illinois right there, you know you got six. Great play by Alleman. Look at it again. Look at that throw. Puts it right in the hands. And look at it. He's five yards behind the secondary for Sacred Heart. Puts it right on the numbers, stride for stride. Great pass by Doyle. The defense really bid on that play action fake. Tony Bunyano will try to tie this game up. The kick is good. That's his 43rd of the year. And we got ourselves a ball game. Two and a half minutes remaining in the opening quarter as Alleman comes right back, takes advantage of the good field position off that kickoff, and has tied this game at seven apiece. Two teams have combined for six trips to the championship game since the IHSA playoff series began in 1975, but neither one's been able to come away with the gold trophy. One will this afternoon on a chilly, but albeit not all that bad afternoon compared to yesterday. Take a look at the scoring drive. They went 62 yards in just under two minutes and got 47 of them on the scoring play from Doyle to Tracy. And you know, that's a rarity for Rock Island to score via the air. Rock Island, uh, Doyle's only thrown four touchdown passes for the whole year. The key stat, as you take a look at this, is that Sacred Heart will throw the ball 24 times a game. Rock Island has completed 24 passes the whole year. The whole year. So that's why that play is so big, and they must have seen something on film, Tom, to take advantage of that and get six. Edwards back deep for the Cyclones. Kicking with the win, Bognano. Taken by Robbie Mosher. Breaks one tackle, spins out to the 22-yard line. 
A return of 13 yards and first and 10 coming up for Sacred Heart Griffin. You know, that touchdown pass was one yard short of the record for the 5A championship game of longest touchdown pass. You see the game schedule today, Morris and Normal Community, Mount Carmel and Prospect at 4 o'clock, and probably one of the marquee games, the uh, most anticipated matchup, Linkway East, the Griffins against Maine South. Dave Bernhardt, Jack McInerney be with you for 6A and 8A. Lee and I will be back with that 7A game but later this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Brent Heisen completes another pass to the sidelines, Alex Reeve. You know, there's not too many teams, Lee, that can pin success on a first-year player, but that's what uh, Ken Leonard said about Alex Reeve, a senior who was playing golf this time a year ago, and he said Reeve's been really, really special, a big part of their success this year. Well, it's unbelievable. 63 catches for over 1,000 yards and 20 touchdowns for a first-year player. All City golfer, a great basketball player, tells you he's an outstanding athlete. Second down, and again, they skip the pass to Sanders. You know, so far, Brent Heisen has not thrown anything out over the middle. Everything's been out to the flat or to the sidelines. Well, short, safe, quick passes for Brent Heisen, trying to get his feet underneath him. The wind is not as bad as it was here yesterday, Tom, but right now it is a little factor. Springfield's thrown into the wind a little bit, and they're trying to get Reeve off. Reeve does a lot of his damage after he makes the catch. You see Brent Heisen taking a look at that little flip chart they have on their wristband right now. Takes a look at formation play, call it. So it's third down. The catch made, breaking a tackle, Sanders. He's got first down yardage and then some all the way up to the 45 yard line after the gain of 15 yards. Sanders now with five receptions for 76 yards. Sanders, six foot five, 238 pounds. You see the tail of two cities, Springfield. Look at that population, 105. Enrollment, 782. That's why they like small football, class 5A football. Look at Rock Island with their enrollment, 497 from the Western Big Six Conference. Sacred Heart, of course, from the Central State 8 Conference. First down from the 43. Brent Eisen. That one, chalk it up to good coverage. And, you know, you take a look, there's nobody down in the secondary the as a receiver for the Cyclones. I think he looked down there, and I think that was a busted play. Well, the thing is, that might be a play set for another play later on, Tom. They're going to sit there and run the option. When you pass the ball as much as Sacred Heart, sometimes you have trouble running the option. It's just a different look as right now they come out in the trips formation. Haven't seen this one early yet. In motion goes Reeve. Brett Heisen, leaping catch by Sanders to the 49-yard line, and Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin's going to go to Sanders until the Pioneers find a way to stop him. Well, so far, they haven't. Right now, they have no idea, no clue as to how to stop him because he's such a physical, dominating player. As you see him, 49 catches, 537 yards. He is a physical mismatch for the Pioneers right now. They've got to do something to slow him down. Sanders, six catches, 86 yards already. And we still got just under a minute to go in the first quarter. Catch made across the way, spinning out of bounds after making the catch was Robbie Mosher. And they do a lot of their damage outside, little quick outcuts by the wide receivers. Sacred Heart, we see Reed Murray catch three or four of those. He's going to catch him on top. It's a nice job. And I'm really impressed with the way they catch the ball with their hands. You see the fans that come down here. A lot of teams bring in there, and you see Weeble. He's got to get better pressure for Rock Island. Well, and so far, Allman's not been able quick. to do that yep. because of the shotgun formation. First and 10, bad snap. Brent Eisen thrown for a loss all the way back at the 32-yard line, and he is thrown down for a loss by, by Dalton, Weeble. 22 yards on the play. Correction, Greg Weeble. Weeble was there to throw them for the big loss. And just a nice job by Brent Eisen just scooping it up because that could have easily been picked up by Weeble and escorted in for the touchdown. But Weeble is very quick for a big guy, closing in on Brent Eisen. And right now, Sacred Heart looks a little bit out of kilter. That's the end of the first quarter. A 7-7 tie between Griffin and Oliver as we take time out to hear from your local stations. At the end of the first quarter. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Champaign. 
Tom Stocker, lead turn ball with you as we get ready for the second quarter. Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin has run more than double the play so far that Alleman has run so far in this football game. Leaping catch made by Reeve. Trying to cut inside, brought down at the 37-yard line. And on the tackle was the defensive end, Patrick Dalton. David Brickner. You see the playoff history, Alleman 14 appearance, Sacred Heart 26. The consecutive appearance, opponents' playoffs, playoff record, and titles. Either way, you know somebody's going to be very excited today, Tom, because they're going to win their first championship trophy. Ken Leonard has taken an undefeated team into the playoff for the Cyclones five of the last six years. A little flea flicker. The flip goes to Pendergrass. And he is into Pioneer territory to the 48-yard line, 15 yards. After the catch, a little hook and ladder. A little hitch pitch. A lot of guys run this. They run it in the middle of the field. But Sacred Heart likes to run to the outside. You see Pendergrass. 618 yards rushing. He has scored 17 touchdowns, so they will use him when he gets in the red zone situation, but takes a little pitch pass and gets another first down for the Griffins, or Cyclones, excuse me. But still fourth down. Bad punt snap back to Brent Heisen. He gets it away somehow. And it spins out of bounds at the 28 yard line. Remember that big 22-yard loss of despite that hook and ladder play. Sacred Heart Griffin had to punt it, and somehow Brenheisen got away a 20-yard punt. You're always aware of the guy who was a punter, especially if it's a quarterback. You sit there and just makes your pass rush and your punt rush just a little bit more hesitant because you're always in the back of your mind thinking that it could be a fake. So the Pioneers with Andrew Doyle at quarterback. Doyle scored three touchdowns in their second-round win at Johnsburg. Also rushed for 145 yards that day. And off goes straight ahead to Matt Frutiger. A 6'1 senior, over 1,000 yards under his belt so far this year, and he picks up about three to the 31-yard line. Pioneers would like to eat a little clock here. They only had the ball for about four and a half minutes in the first quarter, and it seems like Sacred Heart had the ball the whole first quarter, Tom. So right now, defense is playing outstanding for the Pioneers, but they've got to get the offense going. Doyle has made some nice decisions with the option keeping the ball and going around, but you got to get Fruger established and give the ball to Ader a couple of times to keep that defense. You see Sacred Heart with five guys in the last scrimmage. On second down. Again, Frutiger powering his way up to the 35-yard line. Mike Edwards, big, strong 6'2 junior linebacker, makes the stop. You know, ironically, so far in this game, it has been Sacred Heart Griffin that's been the ball control offense, something that Alleman has lived by all year long. And, you know, the kids do so much work in the summer with the 7-on-7 seven -seven passing and passing camps and the practice in the shells that, you know, the short passing game that Sacred Heart runs it's more like a run control because it's a short, safe pass. It's almost like a long handoff. Third and short, third and three. Keeping is Doyle. And he has the apparent first down up to the 41-yard line before he is tackled there by Keenan Gilbert. Spotted at the 39 and a first down for Alleman. Doyle with 51 yards rushing on the day so far. And of course, he's over 1,000 yards. And a lot of guys don't understand it. As an option, quarterback time, you get hit on every play. Even if you don't get tackled, defensive end's going to smack you around, linebacker's going to smack you around. So he's a human bruise on Monday and puts the ice packs out and goes out and plays on Saturday. Maybe that's why he decided to go to Oklahoma on a I baseball think scholarship. That might be a smart call. The pitch and getting outside is Tracy. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line. A good gain of about six, seven yards right there. Tracy scored with a minute 19 left. That led to the uh, tie against Montini, which they won in double overtime the first round. They run Kevin Tracy just enough to keep the defense honest. You know, they've got to sit there and, and count for Frutiger. they got to count for Doyle. they got to account for Ader. And every once in a while, they give Tracy the catch to keep the defense honest on that side of the field. Little crossing handoff to Michael Lader, 5'11 senior. It can also be a breakaway threat when he gets open. And he is stopped at the 46 yard line, bringing up third and three. And Rock Island in desperate need of a first down. 
just for confidence to move the football. You know, they scored that long pass play, but they haven't really gotten the running the game going so far in the first quarter. Yeah, their running game has not gotten any it, rhythm You yet. can almost tell they're kind of feeling around for what's going to work. So third down. Keeping is Doyle, and he breaks free, and he gets the first down. They had him bottled up at the 49, but he was able to lunge forward, and they move the sticks as they get the ball into the Cyclones. And see side how, of the he, field. how quickly he pulls the ball out. He knew he was going to keep that ball before he took the snap. He faked it, flash faked it to Frutiger, the fullback, pulls it out. He knew that he wanted the ball in his hands. He was going to keep it and get that first down for the Pioneers. So far, five first downs for Oliver, nine for the Cyclone, but we're tied on the scoreboard at seven. Straight ahead, Frutiger. Gain of two yards to the 47 yard line. Frutiger. And again, you, you sell that play to also set something up down the road well, too. Well, you sell it too, and the thing I was gonna tell you, Tom, is I think that Frutiger reminds me of the old Nebraska fullbacks. Remember when Tom Osborne was there wearing the option as the fullback would get the ball, put his head down, and if he ran into you, he ran into you. If you ran you over, he ran you over. That's what he reminds me, those old tough Nebraska Cornhusker fullbacks. Well, the option that's in vogue in high school today, the fullback is usually your blocking back. There's the pitch that goes to Michael later. He gets outside. He's still on his feet to the 30. Down to the 25, to the 27-yard line, 22-yard line, a 21-yard gain. And we talked about his ability to break free. There it was. He was shifting on that. Nice pitch by Doyle to get him out in the open field. Runs back, cuts it across the green, and watch this great nine block. I think it's Pat Dalton right up here. You can see him on his screen. Watch this. And see him pull his hands back? He, if he would have touched him, would have been a clip, would have called this play back. But look at him. Boom, fake inside, give him a hip. Get outside, carve up that ball. Rock Island knocking on the door again. Back in the day, used to call those guys shifty. <laughs> He's shifty. From the 23, now you sense the Pioneers' offense gaining some rhythm, gaining some confidence. Doyle keeps it, brought down immediately by Number 58, Mike Steeren, their defensive end, one of the members of that blue-collar defensive line the Cyclones have characterized so far this year. Steeren, 56 tackles and 23 assists on year. Smart defensive end, very physical defensive end. That time, Doyle wanted to sit there and pitch the ball, but Steeren was in his face too quick, wrapped him up for a minus play. Loss of a yard brings up second and 11. Doyle. Hit by Dean Zentgraf, the other defensive end, 5'11", senior. You know, the uh, Cyclones were having trouble towards the end of the year, as I mentioned, stopping the run, and, and Steeren and his defensive line mate said, you know, we sent a message in that 55 to 7 win over Morton that, that we proved the critics wrong. We could stop the run. You know, when you mentioned Sacred Heart, you mentioned what? You mentioned the offense first, and the defense is kind of a second-class citizen. Right now, those guys have a little pride, have a little enthusiasm. They said, hey, we're going to play tough, hard nose defense here in the playoffs. 11th play of this drive. Uh -huh. Broken up just at the last moment. What a job by Steven Salvaggio, the six foot senior. That ball looked like it was going to be complete all the way. If that ball is about six inches higher, Salvaggio's got pick six the other way. Watch him dive. Look at this. Get his hand in there. That a boy and break that pass up. Sell out your body. It's a state championship game for crying out loud. Great play. So it'll be fourth down. And coming in will be Tony Bonano, who has made three field goals this year, his longest 48. This will be a 40-yard try. Matt Cotts is the snapper, and Doyle will be the holder against the win. Does it have enough? No. Oh. No. So we remain deadlocked at 7-7 with just over six minutes remaining in the first half here in the battle for the 4A state championship. Let's take time out now to hear from your local stations. After the missed field goal, we stay tied at seven here about midway through the second quarter at Memorial Stadium. Tom Stalker, Lee Turnbaugh with you as now it's Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin with the football. 
Brent Heisen throws Reedy with the catch at the 21 yard line. And you notice with a lot of Brent Heisen's throw, you see the receivers have to reach up and get it. He's not going to get that ball down where no, it can be. Not. Yeah. And the thing is, Tom, notice that he throws the ball outside the hash marks to the numbers. So it's one on one with the cornerback. He's not going to throw the ball over the middle a lot because you've got linebackers and safeties. You've got a lot more clutter in the middle of the field. So they like to throw it to the outside numbers and outside the hash. Revy, the former golfer, does give new meaning to the term mashy, however, in this game of football. Oh, what a catch! Up at the 40 yard line, leaping catch by the sophomore Robbie Mosher. 14 yards and a first down for the Cyclones. A little quick slant pattern, and Mosher does a nice job of catching the ball in stride. And Brent Heisen, the coach's kid, over. 35 touchdown passes, almost 3,000 yards passion. He's done this before. Spreading out, solid matchup that he liked. Took advantage of it. Long count. Brenheisen off the play action. Going for all the money, looking for Reeve. He's got it. Touchdown, Cyclone, 60 yards on the big, big passing play. Reeve, that's his 21st touchdown catch of the year. And man, was he wide open. The play action fake holds the safeties. Look inside. Brent Heisen sells it. Look at, oh, everybody thinks music over here. No, music down the middle. I mean, listen to the bells ring because it's a touchdown for Sacred Heart. Reeve knows he's got six. Boy, to that secondary bite on that play action fake, you'd see the frustration on Doyle, the free safety, knowing that they were beaten and beaten badly in the secondary. Edwards for the point after. And Griffin. Sacred Heart Griffin with its second seven point lead of the game. They lead 14 to 7, as we hear from our network sponsors. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. 14 7, Sacred Heart Griffin already. Alex Reeve. Eight catches, 109 yards and a touchdown, 80 yards in three plays, a 60-yard scoring strike, putting the Cyclones back in front. As we get the kick coming up here from Mike Edwards. Patrick Brett is back deep, and he takes it at the 10. Slowed up, but he breaks free. Finally brought down at the 22 yard line by David Cavish. A 13 yard return on the kick. And we talked about that in the pregame a little bit about Reavy rules, one of the keys for Rock Island. Eight catches for over 109 yards and a long touchdown, which is a state record for longest touchdown pass in the Class 5A state championship game. Rock Island sits there, is going to have to move the ball. Here in the second quarter, Tom, it seems like Rock Island has started you know, with not great field position, going against the win and trying to sit there and get something established with the fullback, Frutiger. But against the win, Dave DeJager would love to see about a five-minute drive right here, go the length of the field, and answer with a game-tying score right before the intermission. Short gain on the play to the 28-yard line on the carry by Michael Later. And as the game gets deeper and deeper in the game. We get in the second half a little bit. You're going to see the linebackers for Springfield, especially Edwards and Collins and Rakers, sit there and close it down a little bit more, be a little bit more physical with Frutiger, and especially with Doyle. Second down, six yards to go. The pitch, a fumble. Cyclones have got it at the 15-yard line. Tracy coughed up the football, was hit immediately. He never really had a chance. Never had a chance because the cornerback comes zip and Collins makes the fumble recovery. Watch this. Good close down by a defensive end. Look at the fumble. Smack, no chance. And look at Collins. Come up, scoop it up. Keep your feet, keep your feet. Oh, man. But he does a nice job of keeping the fumble recovery in his hands. Almost had a pick six. Sacred Heart knocking on the door. Bobby Rakers, the strong safety, forcing the fumble. A big turnover here and a great opportunity for the Cyclones. Handoff sweeping around was Gilpin. Stopped at the 13-yard line by Sean McKnight, 5'10", junior nose guard. They've run that play a couple times where they run motion across, give it to Gilpin and try to get him outside 
with the one-on-one -on -one block by the wide receiver. That just tells you what kind of athlete Kevin Gilpin is. Sitter can carry the ball. He's already made a couple catches for you. Gain of two brings up second and eight. Just over four minutes remaining in this first half. Brenheisen just gets it away and underthrows Revy. He had to get rid of it quickly. He was under a lot of pressure coming right up the middle. You know, their offense, surprisingly, you know, they've come into the ball game with 2,800 yards of passing, but Springfield always has rushed the ball for almost 1,900 yards on the season. So it's not like they, you know, abandoned the running game at all. They sit there and use the pass to set up the run. And talking to Coach Leonard, he says, we were a fun gun, a run gun. Now we're a pass gun offense this year, more so than last year. Yeah, in the past, they used to use the run really to set up the pass. It's been the other way around this year. Brent Eisen swings it, hauled in by Pendergrass, and a nice shoestring tackle over there on the far side of the field by the linebacker, Andrew Briones. And watch, you know, Pendergrass has got 31 catches out of the backfield, so he's not one-dimensional. Not a lot of high school kids can do this. Look at that one-handed grab, bring it in, almost makes a great one-on-one -on -one move, but when you've got your tailback, catch the ball 31 times for almost 500 yards out of the backfield, that gives you a nice option when they're sitting there closing down Reeve and the other guys. Field goal try on fourth and 10. Mike Edwards is five for five on the year, his longest 43. This one will be a 33-yard attempt. The holder is Gilpin and the snapper, Jeff Sanders. With the win, it's good. So they cash in on the 33-yard field goal. They cash in on the turnover and get points on the board to take a 10-point lead. And when you get the turnovers, you got to take advantage of them. you got to put points on the board. That field goal would have been good. Another 10 yards deep, he sits there and smacks it right through the uprights. He got a little help from the wind, you know, carried in there, Tom. But, boy, he was true and dead center. So with 3.11 to go in the first half, biggest lead of the ball game thus far for Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin, a 10-point margin at 17-7. You know, last week against North Chicago in the, in the semifinals, they were tied at seven, you know, at halftime. So they have been in close ball games here. You know, they average almost over 40 points a game. The Sacred Heart and Rock Island defense has really done a nice job of keeping the offense in check for Sacred Heart. But also in the first round, Alleman trailed Lombard Montini by 15 points with nine minutes to go. And the thing that you like about Rock Island, they've been in close games. Seven games that they've played this year have been decided by 10 points or less. Edwards the kick. And Patrick Brett to the 22-yard line where he stopped and especially now after coughing it up the last time. The Pioneers really need a good sustained scoring drive here to send a message into the locker room at halftime. And the thing is, we talk about this so much. As a football coach, as a guy who plays football, football game of preparation and adjustments. They've prepared for state championship game. They've got three minutes to halftime. Let's see how well they're going to adjust, what the guys are going to do at halftime. See what the sideline adjustments have been on the bench as to what's going to work. As you see, the, look at Alleman, 103 yards rushing, but look at the passing for Sacred Heart, 242. Not a lot of time to work with with the running game. Just over three minutes remaining. Breaking free, Matt Frutiger. And he rambles all the way up to the 44-yard line. Frutiger's been bottled up. He's pretty, been pretty much into the heart of the defense all game long. First chance for him to show what he can do. But it's not why you run the fullback between the tackles. You run to set up a play like this. How many times has he been pounding the line of scrimmage for three and four yards? Look at this. Look at it. Keep his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. Look at it. Transfer the ball. Get up field. And boy, rumbling and stumbling. Look at him. Typical hard-nosed fullback. Rumbling, nice run. Bumbling, stumbling. <laughs> 21 yards in that previous play. Yeah. The tackle broken by Tracy. And he is to midfield. We're gonna, that's going to come back. That's going to be a penalty on Rock Island. Going to get a legal block in the back. Tracy came into the game uh, with 442 yards, averaging 5.7 a carry. As you see, linebacker Mike Edwards. The block in the back will bring the ball back 10 yards. They spot it back to the 36-yard line from the spot of the fall. And you know, a lot of guys, defensive 
guys are taught to turn your back at the last minute, and that's how come you see so many of those illegal block in the backs. Boy, the guys don't sit there and do it on purpose. You see Mike Edwards has been all over the field this year, 52 tackles and 47 assists, but defenders turn their back at the last minute until the official it looks like an illegal block. Second penalty called in the game, the first that's been marched off against one of these two teams. The pitch goes to Ader. Bottled up and brought down back at the 32-yard line. Mike Edwards among several Cyclones there to make the stop, along with Mike Steer in the defensive end. And again, nice job looking to force the pitch deep, a little bit deeper and earlier than he wanted to pitch it. Ader does a nice job of not fumbling the football. Steering was going to tackle both he, he guys. Was, he didn't know it, and that's what you got to do. Tackle them both and sort them out later. <laughs> so it'll be second and long, second and 21 for Alleman. Wouldn't surprise me to see Sacred Heart take a timeout after these next two plays and save a little clock. Key stretch in the game right here. Alleman needs to come up with a big play to keep this drive going. Quarterback draw. But Doyle's going to be stopped about nine yards shy of the first down yardage. At that time, Doyle looked downfield, didn't find anything that he liked. He's used to running the football, so it's nothing new for him. Tucks it under, gets what he can, leaves him with a manageable third down and long situation, third and about eight. Doyle, first year starter at quarterback, and Showed you something about the depth of this Allman program. The last three years, they've won 10 or more games. They've done it with three different quarterbacks, three different fullbacks, your main key in that option. Less than 500 kids in the school tells you something, too. Fourth and long. Getting outside, Frutiger. He's got the first down. Big play for the Pioneers to the 44-yard line of the Cyclones. Don't usually see your big fullback carrying a little pitch to the outside, but tells you he can run. Look at him, crosses over, nice crossover step. Look at him, gets to the outside, turns it up, puts the shoulder down, bam! Runs him right over, gets that extra yard, and gets enough for the first down. Steering almost got a piece of him, but good balance showed by Frutiger to get the first down yardage at the Sacred Heart Griffin 44-yard line. Doyle. Brought down, Nick Taylor gets the sack. 6'1", 242 pound junior. Taylor didn't give up on that as you see a timeout coming up. I believe it's gonna be for Rock Island, but Taylor sit there, did a nice job of pass rushing, closing down number 64 for Sacred Heart. And both teams will come over to the sidelines. Rock Island calls a timeout. Rock Island would like to take advantage. They got the nice run by Frutiger. They're sitting on the 48 yard line. There's still 37 seconds left to go in this second quarter. So they'd sit there and they'd like to sit there and get at least a field goal out of this. Of course, we saw a field goal missed earlier. Against the wind, came up a couple yards short. Boy, you can just feel the emotions going back and forth in this series alone. The, the big first down play by the Pioneers, but then here, the sack by uh, by Nick Taylor. And so, you know, this is, it, it, all of it knows, this is key. Take a look uh, yesterday, the finals, Freeport Aikman wins over uh, Cambridge, 30-28. Dakota over Alito in 2A, a five-point victory. Manlius with the big one over the local favorites from Tolona Unity, 34-7. Fifth straight state championship for Driscoll, beating Newton 42-7. You know, congratulations to Driscoll to sit there and set, you know, set the record for most consecutive state champions. You know, Chips, you know, five. You know, Joy Catholic, Mount Carmel, Province Catholic had the previous records of four. But, you know, to go and know the hard work that goes in to run it, you know, five times in a row, Tom, that's a great accomplishment by that football program. You want to send us a note up in the booth? IHSATV at hotmail.com. Second and long, the pitch. And taken out of bounds across the way up to the 42-yard line. On the carry for Alleman, first time he's carried the ball today, that is Andrew Brionis. Does a nice job again, turning up, a nice pitch by Doyle, puts it right in his hands to get him outside so he doesn't have to worry about catching the pitch and the turn up field. That's a key when you're running option, let your tail back and your running back and get it in stride so you have to move. Doyle to throw, has a man, but just overthrows him inside the 20 yard line. Was looking for Weeble. Covered on the play by Salveggio for the Cyclones. Weeble, an all-state 
guy for Class 5A, also all-conference basketball player. You know, he's a converted safety, used to play safety. Now he's playing defensive end. He's got 11 catches for 195 yards on the year, so he's an option in their offense, but a great two-way performer for the Pioneers. So can the Pioneers convert another fourth down to keep this drive going, just 30 seconds left in the half. Doyle keeps, hit by the linebacker Edwards, shy of the first down, and the Cyclones hold them on downs. Doyle kind of got no man's land that time. He tucked the ball early. Watch him, he sits there, comes down, he tucks it early, tries to go up. He's got to stretch that play a little further outside. Look at Edwards, two hands around, nice wrap up, nice form tackle. Now Sacred Heart will take over. Now most schools, you would think, 25 seconds left, up by 10, maybe just be happy to run out the clock. Nope, not this high-powered Cyclone offense. They see an opportunity maybe to tack seven more on the board. And it seemed like after the first quarter that Rock Island had to sit there and get some more plays run. But look at this. Each team has run 31 plays, and Allman's got 200 yards of total offense already. First and 10 from the Cyclones' 37-yard line. The fake, the long throw by Brett Heisen. He's got a man incomplete at the 20-yard line as he was looking for Alex Reeby. Great coverage by the cornerback, Patrick Taylor. Does a nice job, and that's a pretty ball by Brent Heisen. It's a post pattern by Reeby. He got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and look at this ball. Look how he steps in there. He puts enough air under it that Reeby can come get it. And look at this, reach inside. Oh! Might have been just a little bit early, but that's a great play breaking that up. Got his hand in there. So it'll bring up second down with 18 seconds left in the second quarter. Sacred Heart faithful didn't like that call. Brent Heisen again, throwing it up down the sideline. Incomplete. Reavy, the intended receiver, across the way with 12 seconds now left in the first half. You know, Rock Island's going to drop their safeties and their corners back about 15 yards, especially on this long situation with 12 seconds left to go. Might be a, a decent time to run some kind of underneath route and get, you know, maybe 20, 25 yards and get yourself in field goal position. They can do that, especially with the athletes they have. Look for Pendergrass. You haven't seen him out of the backfield catch one yet. On the year, Brent Eisen completed nearly 70% of his passes. So far today, he's completed 18 of 24. 75%. Now Pendergast will just run it. The clock stopped with seven seconds remaining. And it'll bring up a fourth down. And a timeout taken by the Pioneers with the seven seconds remaining. And you want to make sure you set up your special teams. You don't want any breakdowns. There's only seven seconds left to go in this half, so you don't want any breakdowns. You know, Brent Heisen is the punter as well. As you see Coach Leonard over there, he wants to make sure. He knows that special teams are a big part. And how special would it feel if he can hold this halftime lead and, and win it. You know, he lost a heartbreaker in 95. He lost a 2003 to Julia Catholic, 24 to 21. So he's been here. He got his 200th win last week in the semifinals at Sacred Heart. So he's been here at the school forever and a day. And it would be very, very special if he got that state championship today. His 22nd year overall at uh, Sacred Heart Griffin. Normally, as you see, take a look at Dave DeJager, who is in his 19th year as part of the Pioneers program, his fifth as the head coach, taking over for Longtime successful coach Mike Tracy. And I'm not saying that it wouldn't be any more special no, for no, the no, I'm just saying, you know, either guy's going to come out here real happy this afternoon. Uh, Ken Leonard, normally 200 is a pretty good milestone. 201 today would be a big milestone for his career. And the clock runs out on the punt. We've reached the end of the first half here at Memorial Stadium, the battle for the 4A, or for the 5A state championship. 17-7, Sacred Heart Griffin with the lead. Both teams looking for their first ever state championship. And Sacred Heart Griffin trying to cap off an undefeated season. They come into the game 13-0. Entertaining first half. Lots of long drives, and let's go send it down to the field. Mike. 
Finish All right, first. thank you very much. And we do have Sacred Heart Griffin coach Ken Leonard here. And Ken, first of all, big defensive stand in the half. You had to like that. Yeah, that was a great stand by our defense. The defense have been playing great all year. And, you know, that one play action, other than that, we've been playing pretty good. This is a great offensive team, good running team. So, um, you know, hey, that's I, I'm, I'm real pleased with our team. And we've shot ourselves in the foot. We just got to come in and uh, – uh, make some adjustments, and um, you know I feel real good about our second half. Ken, it looks like your offense is playing with a lot of confidence. Yeah, I mean it's it's been all year. I mean we've we've got a real high-powered offense. We've got some great players, and uh, we'll take what they give us. And um, you know we'll, we won't change much second half, probably. Ken, on the second touchdown pass, your son Derek Leonard is the head coach at Rochester. He's on the sidelines. You guys are extremely close. Did you get an assist from him on that second touchdown? No, 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 no. <laughs> he uh, he likes to think so, but no, that's 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 what we call money and. Uh, we have a lot of the same with plays. You know, they, they do the same offense we do, and so, you know, yeah. Uh, but, no, it's, I mean, you know, it was a, it was a play that uh, we've been designing, and, uh, and we've, just, we, we've kept it. This is the first game we've used it. One more thing. What are you going to tell your guys in the locker room at the half? we got 24 minutes. 24 minutes, and we got something we've never had before. Good luck, Sam. Ken, you. thanks for the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sacred Heart Griffin head coach Ken Leonard. He's very happy with the way his team is playing, both offensively and getting that stop at the end of the first half defensively. The Cyclones are leading 17 to 7 at the half. Tom and Lee. Mike, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of meaning in that statement. Ken Leonard said something we've never done before. We're at halftime, the 5A state championship. Back with more from Champaign after we hear from your local stations and then a network break. All right, welcome back to Memorial Stadium. We're at halftime in the Class 5A championship game where the Cyclones of Sacred Heart Griffin are leading the Pioneers of Alleman by a score of 17 to 7. It's time to meet the cheerleaders from the two respective schools in the 5A championship game. And we start with the black, white, and gold of the Sacred Heart Griffin Cyclones. And first things first, we're going to have them do a cheer. Go ahead. All right, those are the Cyclone cheerleaders from Sacred Heart Griffin, and we have uh, the three captains right here real quick. Let's get your name. I'm Kara Hellner. All right, Kara, what year are you? I'm a senior. All right, and what's your name? Lacey Sarah. All right, and Lacey, you're a senior? Yes. Okay, and what's your name? Betsy Metz, senior too. All right, so we have Betsy and Lacey and Kara. Did I get that right? Yes, yes. All right, Betsy, let me just ask you, uh, Coach Leonard's been at the school for a long time and everything. Uh, how happy would you be to see him finally win a state championship? Um, I'd be pretty excited. <laughs> but how exciting is it to have a halftime lead? Uh, really exciting. <laughs> Who's your favorite player in Sacred Heart Griffin? Probably Alex Reedy. One more time. Alex Reedy. Oh. Is he better at football or golf? Football. Football? Yeah. But he's good at golf, I've been told. Yeah. And, right. ba and basketball. And basketball. Yeah. At least. He's oh, good wow. at basketball. All right. Now, what about the second half? Uh, how much are you going to be into this game? We are so pumped. We got the lead now, and we're hoping to take it home. All right. Well, listen, best of luck to the Cyclones in the second half. Thanks a lot. And we're going to head over this way and talk to the Alderman Pioneer cheerleaders. First of all, we're going to have them do a cheer. They are dressed very sharply in the green sweats and the uh, stocking caps uh, with the green, black, and white all there. So go ahead and take us away with a cheer, Pioneer cheerleaders. Well done by the Alderman Pioneer cheerleaders, and I uh, believe the uh, captain is it Adriana. Did I say that right? Adriana? Okay, excuse me, Adriana. Ten points down. That's nothing. That's that's easy to come back from, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. All right. <laughs> Adriana, what year are you in school? I'm a senior. You're a senior. All right. And how much fun has this senior year been so far in regards to watching this football team get here? It's been great. It's been fun this year. Tell me what school's like and been like the past uh, couple of weeks or even three weeks during the playoff run uh, at school. Just uh, how much is everyone into the team and so forth? Well, it's been really exciting this whole season. Um, the team has just gone so far. We, we didn't think we were going to get this far, but, you know, we did our best and we we're here. All right, Adriana, and uh, let's see, who else do we have? Or what's your name? I'm Kat Vanderbunnett. All right, 
What year are you? I'm a senior as well. Okay, let's get a quick final score prediction from Adriana. Of course, Pioneer's going to win. We know that. So <laughs> let's just get a score. Um, <laughs> about about 3127. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 3127. All right. Adriana, thank you very much. Thank you to all the Alderman Pioneer cheerleaders. Best of luck in the second half. <laughs> and we will have more from Halftime at Memorial Stadium right after we take this local break. All right, welcome back to Memorial Stadium. We're at halftime of the Class 5A championship game. Sacred Heart Griffin leading by a score of 17 to 7. So these two women are very happy. They're with Sacred Heart Griffin. This is Sister Margaret Joanne Greeter. And right next to me is Sister Catherine O'Connor. And on my right is Colin Matandra. He is the principal with uh, Rock Island Alleman High School with the Pioneers. We'll get to Colin in just a moment. But first, so let's start with Sister Greeter. How much fun are you having so far? Oh, it's been a fantastic time. What a season. It's been great. Sister O'Connor, what do you think so far? It's just wonderful. I, if you look up in the stands, we just have such support. It's it's fabulous. Sister, Sister Greeter, I've known Ken Leonard for a long time, and I'll tell you, even on a personal level, he's a guy that uh, you genuinely genuinely root for. He's not only is he a terrific coach, he, he's he's a good guy, and boy, winning a state title, I know you'd love to see him get. It. I know. I, I, he needs that so much. He's got his 200th win last week, and it's like he's such a model for the kids on the field, off the field, all the way around. Good guy. You know, Sister O'Connor, I was on the Sacred Heart Griffin sideline for a lot in the first half, just kind of talking with him a little bit, not interrupting him, not letting him concentrate. Okay. But uh, they're classy. That's right. I better not. <laughs> what classy young men, though. And, I, and you see yeah. this on a, on, a, on a daily basis. It's just an example of the excellence that we have in all areas, academic excellence and a community of faith. That's our motto, and this is a good example of it. Great city, too. All right. Sister Greeter, Sister O'Connor, good luck in the second Thank half. You. Now we're going to be joined here by Colin Latandra, the principal at Alleman High School. And uh, Colin, first of all, uh, I've got to say, you've got a terrific football team. I don't care if they're down 10 points. This is a close game. Appreciate that. It is a great one. We're proud of them. And Dave Jajager, uh, there's a friend of mine who's a sportscaster in the Quad Cities for a long time. And I asked him about Dave, and he just grins. He said he's just a, a class act. That's exactly what Dave would do if you said something like that to him. He'd grin. He has, he's a class act. He's great. He's our business manager. Uh, he's great for kids. He's, he's got a strong work ethic, and he brings out the best in his athletes. Colin, this is huge for you guys. First time back here in 15 years. I mean, this is uh, this is not just a typical trip for you guys. Uh, first of all, it's a long trip, but, but boy, it's special, isn't it? It's very, very special. We're glad to be here again. Uh, it's kind of nice. We've got Kevin Tracy, who's playing. His dad is the last one who brought a team from Alleman down here. Uh, we're real happy. It's animating the school. There's a lot of spirit. Uh, there's a lot of vibrations in the school. It's real positive. And, of course, one of your players, Frutiger, the uh, fullback, and, and in the backfield, he had a cousin and an uncle who won a state championship last night with Bureau Valley. So I'm sure that uh, uh, Alleman was rooting for Bureau Valley last night. Yes, we were. Every, we're pulling for each other. Yes, we are. Colin Latondra with Alleman High School. Thank you very much. Good luck second half. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And we'll be back with more from Memorial Stadium right after this local break. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Champaign. Halftime of the 5A state championship as Rock Island Alleman trails Sacred Heart Griffin by 10-17-7. Tom Stocker, Lee Turnbaugh with you. And uh, that, that sequence right at the very end of the second quarter, Lee, might prove to be maybe the pivotal point in this game. I think it is. And the thing is for Sacred Heart, they've been in close games, especially last week against North Chicago in the semifinals. They know what they have to do. But to come in with a 10-point lead at half is huge because right now Rock Island is almost one-dimensional. They run the ball a lot. Not that they're out of this game by any stretch of the imagination, but they've got to sit there and open up the offense as you see the halftime stats. And the thing, look at the rushing yards for Rock Island, 153 to 3 for Sacred Heart. And we knew Sacred Heart was going to throw the ball, 242 yards passing. Look at the time of possession. Rock Island has had the ball. But look, what a great stamp, uh, state championship game. Only one penalty for 10 yards. Rock Island, you take a look at the halftime adjustments, what they've got to do, nothing special. They're going to sit there and do the same things as you look at the rushing. Look at that. The score is 17-7, 29 times for 153 yards. Secret Hearts only run the ball 10 times for three rushing yards. Look at the third down conversion rate, Tom. Four out of seven for Rock Island, three out of seven for Sacred Heart. Fourth down conversion is 0 for two for Allman. It was more of a field position thing for them. Sacred Heart made the only first down conversion that they had a chance to. 
Now, Alvin will have the football likely to start the third quarter. Let's take a look now at the highlights from the first half and see how the Cyclones went ahead and built this 10-point lead here at the intermission. They did it with the big play. Here's the big throw from Bobby Brenheisen and, and big, big uh, factor, Jeff Sanders in the first half. Jeff Sanders, a big target, big, huge tight end. But look at this. Rock Island comes back. Hey, we can pass the ball to Finds him wide open behind everybody, five yards back, almost stumbles, but takes it in for six for the Pioneers. Kevin Tracy taking it all the way for the score, and that tied it up at seven all. But here, watch the play action fake, and the secondary for the Pioneers bought it, bought it big. Wide open all by himself, Alex Reeve. He takes it all the way, a 60-yard scoring play to put him back in front. They also then capitalized on a fumble recovery to turn that into a field goal. That is how they have the 10-point lead. Now down on the field with Dave DeJager. Let's head it down to Mike. All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Lee. And we are with Alderman head coach Dave DeJager. And Dave, first of all, on the good side, your offense is definitely moving the ball, and you have to like what you see from your offense for the most part. Yeah, I think we're, we're having uh, making some good decisions. Uh, we have had a couple negative plays. They're starting to blitz us a little bit. we got to make sure we, we pick that up. But uh, for the most part, we've been able to sustain uh, every time we've had the ball. But... Uh, uh, you know, we got, uh, we're got we going to get the ball here to start the second half and see what we can do with it. That's going to be a big drive, don't you think? Yeah, it's been a big drive for us all year. We've, that's, uh, we've been able to produce some points out of the first drive of the second half, so hopefully we're able to do it today. Dave, defensively, what kind of adjustments do you think you need to make? Well, I, I, I thought we kind of settled in after we kind of got, got a little bit of an idea of their speed and, and, and ability. Uh, I think we need to, to ratchet it up a little bit on, on their number two receivers, be more physical with those guys that are kind of having their way. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, we haven't had a whole lot of success in getting after their quarterback, but maybe we can do some of that second half. But, uh, you know, I, I thought uh, after we kind of figured, uh, settled in, uh, it wasn't too bad, uh, but we still got to keep after them. Thanks, Dave. Good luck second. Thank you. Thanks. All right, that is Dave DeJager, the Alleman head coach. His team trailing 17-7. And Tom and Lee, you heard it there. Uh, he feels like they need to get after the Sacred Heart Griffin quarterback, but of course we'll talk about that more in uh, just a moment. But right now, we need to take a local break. More after this. Third quarter, just a few moments away here at Memorial Stadium in Champaign, where they say it might get almost 50 degrees today. <laughs> I don't think, I don't about, think that's going to happen. So. But still, not a bad afternoon at all weather-wise here, as in 24 minutes, one of these two schools will be crowned a state champion in football for the first time in school history. Ten-point lead, and you got to think, for those guys in green and white, they got to score the next points. Take a look again, Doyle's decisions. For the most part, he's done a good job. He's done a very good job, especially faking to the fullback, Frutiger, and turning it outside. Quarter and change. Time possession pretty even. Rock Island actually leads. They've had the ball 12 minutes and 55 seconds as opposed to just 11 minutes. Reavy rules. Reavy, Alex Reavy, the all-state wide receiver for Sacred Heart, has had a big first half, nine catches, 109 yards, and a touch. And looking for Sacred Heart. Bobby B in the band. Bobby B about 38 yards away from the state record for most passing yards in the Class 5A game, 18 out of 24, doing a great job. Out Fox the option. They've really taken away the halfbacks from the option attack by Rock Island and make Frutiger and Doyle beat him. Pound Pendergrass really haven't had to do that because they've opened up the game going to Jeff Sanders, the big tight end, and also Reavy. So Pendergrass, especially if they hold this 10-point lead, Tom, he's going to play more in the second half. Well, and they're so tough to defend. Uh, the Cyclones have got so many different weapons. In fact, in the first round of the playoffs, Brent Heisen completed passes to seven different receivers. And the thing you like about him is he's a coach's kid. And you like those Jim Rants, those guys, you know, the water boys who are now the ball boys who are yep. now the, the yep. quarterbacks. They know the program. They know the ins and outs. They know the decision-making process. You know, when dad's out home, you know, watching film, who's with them? The little Bobby, you know, Brent Heisen watching film. So he understands the game of football, what adjustments. Doyle, on the other hand, does too. They're not going to make any adjustments. You take a look. Uh, the Cyclones have had seven yards per play on average. Rock Island, 6.3. So both teams are moving the football. It's not like Rock Island's got to abandon the running game. Stay with what's got you here, Tom. But they got to be effective when they get to the they red zone. They do have to sit there and get a little bit better field position. They didn't have that in the second quarter. So Edwards will kick. And the Cyclones will have the wind to their backs in this third quarter. 
So Edwards approaches the football, and the third quarter is underway. Patrick Brett running laterally, slowed down and brought down at the 20-yard line. On the tackle, slowing him up was Mike Gazzardo, a 5'8 senior on the special teams, a nine-yard return. So the Pioneers will begin this drive from the 20. See what kind of adjustments that Coach DeJager has made in the running game. I don't think he's got to make any adjustments. Doyle is doing a fine job with this decision. If anything, get Ader involved a little bit more in the offense. Doyle hands to Frutiger. Dive straight ahead, twisting and churning and turning his way to the 22-yard line where he's met by a host of black-shirted Cyclones. It'll bring up second down and about eight yards to go. You know, in their double wing attack, their option offense, we talked about Doyle with over 1,000. We talked about Fruger, who went over 1,000 last week. But Michael Ader, 800 yards rushing. So they got three guys with almost 3,000 yards rushing. So they're going to sit there and stay committed to the run. Frutiger again, straight ahead for a couple of hard-fought yards. He ran into Andrew Collings, the 5'9 junior, who started as a freshman as a linebacker against Joliet Catholic in 2003. You know, talking to Coach Leonard this week, he said that game and also the 95 game against Providence where they had a 10-point lead with five and a half minutes left, he said those were the two tough ones to take. Of course, both in the state championship game, but those are the ones you remember. But after a while, the sting of losing gets replaced by the, the pride of accomplishment. Another dive play straight ahead for Frutiger up to the 30-yard line. Very close to the yardage needed for the first down. And this one, they may have to take a measurement to see. They needed to get the ball right to the 30. Nope, don't even need a measurement. He got the first down. Now, you watch Rock Island on film this week a little bit, Tom, and they, they ran a little bit more on balance line, took an extra lineman and moved to one side. We didn't so, see so much of that in the first half, so that could be one of the things that the Pioneers take advantage of, run a little bit more on balance and with a little bit more double tight look. Five up on the line defensively for the Cyclones. The pitch, and the ball's loose, the fumble. Cyclones have it at the 22-yard line. A bad pitch after the initial fake because the pitch man was covered. And I think it was Andrew Collins again on that fumble recovery watch. They do a great job. The quarterbacks and the outside people are coming up. Watch him flash right there. He is there before the pitch guy gets the ball, forced the fumble. And right there you see Collins come in. He's trying to scoop up one because he had one that he almost scooped up. It looks like maybe somebody else got the ball, but he's right there. Another big turnover for the Cyclones. Zentgraf 50 forcing the fumble. Dave Zencraft recovered by Collins. Well, just before the end of the first half, the Cyclones converted on a takeaway from Alleman for a field goal here. Great field position. Pendergrass twisting his way to the 20 yard line, tackled by Patrick Dalton. Got a great block by his. Offensive tackle Matt Mass who kind of pulled around and led that play. Haven't seen too much of Pendergrass, but right now they're in a territory that Pendergrass likes. He does have 17 touchdowns on the year, Tom, so they like to use him here in the red zone. They've got Mosher, Sanders, Reby all wide. The snap to Brenheisen. Well, that one he overthrew, Reby. He's been throwing him high, but for the most part, the receiver's been able to bring him down. Not even that time could... Uh, Sanders bring it down. And, and the thing is, what he does, Brent Heisen and Tom, is he sits there, he's in the shotgun, takes one, two steps back, and throws the ball. Doesn't step in the throw that time. That's why the ball sailed on him. And another factor that's got to come into it is there's a little bit bigger crowd on the U of I field than the high school fields that these kids are used to playing on. Especially in an artificial surface. In and out of the hands of Sanders. He, that's the first one he's coughed up today. And he got a good hit. And I tell you what, that's a nice job of Michael Ader coming in there and getting his hand inside and knocking off Sanders. Sanders did a nice job of trying to shield his body between uh, Ader and the football. He gets his hand in there and knocks it away. Ader became a, somewhat of a mythological hero after he recovered that 
Cahokia a fumble on their three to set up the game-winning touchdown in their 24-20 semifinal win. Here's a field goal try, Edwards, 37 yards, looking for his second of the day and seventh of the year. The hold by Gilpin. The kick is good. He has stayed perfect on the year, and twice the Cyclones have capitalized on a takeaway to get a field goal, and they've upped the lead to 13 at 20 to 7. Taking advantage of the turnovers is very key, but taking advantage of turnovers with points is even bigger. Second time they got a field goal off of a fumble, and take advantage of that, not get too greedy. You know, they could have sit there and tried to force the issue, Tom, but they just simply took the three points that they had and extend their lead to 20 to seven with 9.41 left to go in the third quarter. And right there with the uh, field goal, Edwards has tied the Class 5A title game record uh, set by Wheaton Warrenville South in 92. So they've tied a kicking record there with that second field goal of the game. And you see Ken Leonard right there, and you know so so much that he wants to stay title for his kids. And you see Coach Jager over there for Rock On. He wants one as well. But how cool is that? Edwards, all-time football, Tom. You know, your linebacker comes off, you know, Lou Groza, all that type of stuff. When you were playing, he comes out there and he kicks that field goal. You know, just like when football was invented. Why did you turn to me when you said old-time football? Well, because I knew that you would understand that. Yep, you better believe it. Without the face masks. <laughs> As I was telling my old buddy Red Grange many years ago. <laughs> of course, you know why he got uniform 77. He was behind the guy that got 76. Here is the kick by Edwards. Brad has to go inside the five to bring it in. Starts it upfield. Slowed up at the 20, brought down at the 22-yard line. What a 17-18 yard return. And now every possession as the clock ticks away, more urgency grows for the Pioneers. They've got to make something happen. We talked about that as being one of our keys, quarter and change. They couldn't sit there and change possessions a lot with Sacred Heart because Sacred Heart's offense is so very explosive and takes advantage of things. You see the two turnovers led to six points, both field goals for the Cyclones. Right now, Rock Island's got a counter back. Quick pass in and out of the hands of Patrick Taylor, who was the lone wide out there on the far side of the field. You can see, though, when they try to throw the football, even though you've got a quarterback who's going to be going to a Division I school as a baseball player, passing is, is, is not their strength. You can tell. Well, the reason, and it's not any fault of their own, is that they commit to the running game. Okay, they spend a majority of practice time on the running game, and that's great. No problem. All right? Do the things that you do well. Now dropping back to throw is Doyle. Got a man wide open, caught by Tracy, and he's out of bounds for a first down at the 44-yard line. Kevin Tracy does a nice job of riding the sideline route out of the backfield. Doyle locks in on him. Little flash fake to the fullback, rolling to his left, and look at this throw. Look at Tracy, wide open on the sideline, takes it, gets the hit, gets both feet in bounds is the Pioneers a first down. 22 yards on the play, but you can see passing against that wind, you can see Tracy had to wait just a little longer for that, any longer, and the defender would have been there. But they got the first down at the 44. The play action, the Frutiger, and he underthrows his receiver at the 48-yard line. Again, he was looking for Taylor. And the thing is, when they run that play, it's a quick slant pass to the wide receiver. They flash fake to the fullback to hold the linebacker and to hold the safety, not keep him suck up so fast. Just try to throw it, and he got a little bit behind his wide receiver. So Alleman passing on first down there, setting up a second and ten. Well, kids like to do that. Coaches like to do that, especially because you know you're going to uh, get a base defense usually. Not a lot of blitz package on first down. The true base defense take advantage of it. Looks like... Doyle changing the play at the line of scrimmage. True wishbone backfield behind him. Takes it out of Frutiger's gut and carries it and is out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Harry picked up about four yards, setting up a key third down to keep this drive going. You know, the Pioneers offense, you take a look and you say, yeah, they're a running team. They don't pass the ball very well. But I guarantee you, Tom, they spend as much time on the full back ride and the option pitch as Sacred Heart spends in the passing game. It's just a different type of offense. See, Dave DeJager, he's staying the course. He's running that football. They've had some success here on this drive. 
third and five coming up for his pioneers. Frutiger doesn't get much. Gets it to the 48 yard line, two yards shy. And a big fourth down call coming up for Alleman. Wouldn't surprise me if they went for it here. They got fourth and looks like a long one. And they've gone for it fourth down before. And usually when they go on fourth down, it's either going to be Doyle keeping it or he's going to give it to the big fullback, Frutiger. And yeah, Coach Jager, we're going for it. We're state wow. championship game, babe. We're going for it. Wow. Like it, Coach. Like it a lot. Don't leave anything on the field here. It's the state championship game. Doyle. Just keeps it. Penalty marker thrown on the snap. Well, it gives the ball to the fullback, Frutiger. Gets enough for the first down. We'll have to see what the penalty is. Throw from the side, Judge. And it's going against the Pioneers. A lot of times, teams like to go on a quick count to first sound on fourth down because the defense doesn't always get set. And that's, I think, what happened to the Pioneers. They went on a quick count. Nobody was set. We'll see the official call here by the referee. But now it looks like Rock Island's going to have to punt it. Here we go, shift on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Down remains four. Costly penalty. And this will be Alleman's, uh, Alleman's first punt of the game. Mike Ader is back to receive the snap. A low one, old end over end against the win. And they pick up about 11 yards net on the play. Timeout on the field, 8.13 to go, third quarter. Sacred Heart Griffin leads by 13 as we hear from our local stations. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. About midway through the third quarter, a 13-point lead for the Cyclones at Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin. Tom Stalker, Lee Turnbaugh with you. Alleman comes up empty in its first possession of the second half. And now Bobby Brenheisen and company will put it in play from their own 31. Wide open Sanders. Secondary for Alleman playing a little soft. A lot of room there for Sanders as he just turned and there was the football delivered nicely by Brenheisen. Well that time they flicked Sanders out to the wide receiver position and, and Michael Lader, you know, maybe about 5'8", five, 5'10", five, if that, tops. You know, and now you got Sanders out there, the big wide receiver, six foot five. 250 pounds as the penalty flag is on the field. That's a mismatch, and he's going to go to that every time. Looks like it's going to be a walk-off against the Cyclones, thrown in the Cyclones' backfield. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Down remains one. Still be first down, 10 yards from the spot of the foul as they'll walk it. And I believe that's the first penalty that's been walked off against the Cyclones. Yep. Only two penalties for Rock Island, so it's been a very well-played game, and you would figure that is as both teams with great coaches, Coach Jager for Rock Island, and of course, Coach Leonard for Springfield, do a nice job of coaching special teams and coaching the penalties and how not to play. First down and 26. The catch made by Jeff Sanders. It takes three Pioneers to bring him down. Hit and brought down on the play after a pickup of about eight yards. We saw in the first quarter they ran him more of a tight end and used him down the seam inside the numbers, and now they flexed him out and got him one-on-one -on -one with the quarterback or the cornerback, so now he's got the physical mismatch outside instead of inside. Second and 18. Revy the man in motion. Brent Heisen. Looking for Rivy. Underthrown, intercepted at the 45 yard line. Kevin Tracy, the strong safety, picks up the badly thrown pass. The spark the Pioneers need right now looks like he was looking for Rivy. Underthrew it a little bit. Brent Heisen looked to the left, came back to the right, and we'll see it right here. Now he looks off, looks off, now he comes off, looks to the right, and just throws it underneath a little bit. Rivy's got no chance, and look at Tracy step inside, catch the ball, give Rock Island an advantage right here. Great field position for the Pioneers. So 
Big break for the Pioneers at the 45 yard line of Sacred Heart Griffin. Frutiger on the dive play. Tackled by Mike Steeren. He was the first to get to him, and Sean Johnson there as well. That time, Matt Sacred Heart Jerry put six guys on the line of scrimmage and had a run blitz into the B gap to get between the guard and the tackle, and they just blitz correctly, blitz right into Frutiger and makes the play. Sometimes that happens. If they blitz maybe the A gap, Tom, maybe they open up a natural gap and Frutiger gets a big one. Well, the Cyclones have capitalized on two Pioneer turnovers for a couple of field goals. An opportunity here now for Alleman. Off the play action fake. Broken up at the 32. Looking for Weeble. And the pass broken up nicely by Keenan Gilpin. And looks in there, David Cash also got his hand in there. Look at this, Doyle looks, looks, look. Cavage gets a hand in there, I believe that's it. Yep, 81, yep. does a nice job. Another half a step, he got an interception himself. Indeed, the 6'1 junior, David Cavish, number 81, breaking up the play nicely, bringing up a third and nine for the Pioneers. You know, when you practice against the passing offense, as the secondary does for Sacred Heart, you get pretty good at breaking on the ball. Do a nice job sitting there in closing speed, how fast you sit there and when a the guy breaks out of his route to close him down. Nice job by Cavish. Big third down play here. And again, Doyle to pass, has his man. The completion goes to Tom Miner. And a first down for the Pioneers. Big catch by Miner, a 6'3 junior. Does a nice job of shielding himself between the ball and the defender and catching the ball and getting enough for the Pioneers for the first down. He lists Miner at six foot three. I don't know if he's that tall, but he does a nice job of stretching his body out and getting enough for the first down. And now you're seeing the Pioneers. Remember, they averaged about seven or eight pass attempts a game. There's the pitch going to Michael later. And he's out of bounds near the first down marker at the 25 yard line as he picks up about nine on the play. And you got to give credit to the other guy, Kevin Trace, who made a nice lead block on the, sit on the edge outside, allows Ader to get outside and get enough for almost a first down. And look at this, you see it, Doyle, faking the fullback, pitch it out there, and look at that 24, look at him, get his hands in front, get his hands inside, get enough, nice block. Yeah, that bought, that bought him a lot of extra yardage right there. Second and short, let's see what uh, the Pioneers do with the situation, a penalty marker thrown on the play as Ader picks his way through the left side for an apparent first down, but this one may come back. This one's going to be a double shift, a legal shift by Rock Island. They had two guys in motion at the same time, so they're going to bring this back, give them about second and six. You know, and, and that's one thing when you're, you're coaching, that's only the third penalty against Rock Island. As a coach, you know, you sit there, you're moving the football, Tom, you're moving the football, and all of a sudden, it's, it seems like a cheap five-yard penalty, but it, it, it's a drive killer. It really is a drive killer. Illegal shift on the offense, five-yard penalty. Down remains two. It's that nickel and dime stuff that really comes back to haunt you. You know what, but talking to Coach DeJager, you know, this week, he says, we are very low-key as a football team. We just, you know, pretty much do the same thing, go about our jobs, don't get too high, don't get too low. We play even keel. That's the word he used, even keel for his football team. The true wishbone backfield. Frutiger, big game as he breaks free and he's down to the 13 yard line and a first down. Frutiger is like a heavyweight prize fighter. He's just a jab, jab, all of a sudden a cross hook and you're down and that's why they run the fullback Frutiger in between the tackles. Yeah, he only gets two or three yards sometimes, but when he sits there and breaks off a big one, it's because they soften up the underbelly of that defense by pounding him inside the tackles. 16 yards on his carry, and it's at the 14-yard line. Again, this coming off of an interception. Keeping his Doyle to the nine-yard line. First to greet him defensively, the Mike, it was Mike Edwards, the linebacker. And the one thing that Rock Island has done a little bit is why not the splits to the wide side guard and tackle to the wide side field, giving them a little bit more running room for Frutiger. That time Doyle does a nice job of flash faking to the fullback and taking it and cutting it up inside and getting what he can. Gives him a second and five situation in the red zone. This will be the 48th play of the game for Oliven. Nine more than the Cyclones have run. 
Frutiger, the fullback up the middle to the six yard line, bringing up third down. Third and three, and I guarantee you this is four down territory for the Pioneers. You know, not that they don't have a good field goal kicker, but they'd really come out of here with a touchdown and three points because you don't know if you're going to get down in the situation again with, after the turnover. Now you come away with seven. You're right back in the football game with lots of time to go. Four minutes plus left in this third quarter. Keeping and in for the touchdown is Doyle. He runs for his fifth touchdown correction, his 17th touchdown of the season, and they're right back in it. You got to credit the offensive line for that touchdown right there, Tom, because he never gets touched. He fakes the Frutiger the fullback, takes it off between the guard and the tackle, and he just waltzes in the end zone five yards. It looks like they might be setting up to get the extra point. They call the swinging gate. Now they move over, but Doyle doesn't get touched as he gets in the end zone, and Rock Island getting back in this ballgame. Doyle will hold Bagnano. The extra point. Well, that attack on his second extra point of the game. He does. We've got a seven point football game here with a quarter and a half to go for the 5A championship game. 20 to 14, Sacred Heart Griffin, as we hear from our network sponsors. Doyle with a touchdown brings his team within seven as Bagnano will now kick off as they went 45 yards off the interception in eight plays and took just over three minutes. Gilpin inside his 10 takes the kick and he is out across the 25 to the 26 yard line a 20 yard return and suddenly Sacred Heart Griffin goes hey who are those guys they keep coming back they're within seven they're six down right now it does kind of remind you of the Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid yeah. you know who are those guys but Rock Island's not going to go away they've played in close ball games seven of their ball games have been decided by ten points or less so it's not like it's been blowout city either way and we'll see how Sacred Heart responds so Bobby Brent Eisen he's got uh, Pendergrass in the backfield and four wideouts Inside shovel pass to Pendergrass. Great running to the 41 yard line. Finally brought down on the play after a gain of 14 yards. Pendergrass kind of forgotten man, but look at he's get his shoulder square, turns up, covers up, and carries that ball. We've seen him. He's got over 600 yards rushing on the season, 31 catches out of the backfield. So right now it looks like they might get more of a ball control type of offense going with Brent Heisen and Pendergrass. Catch made by Reavy. And he's out of bounds at the 49 yard line. Picks up close to eight yards on the play. Forced out of bounds by Michael Lader on the near sidelines. Reavy does a nice job. You see Brent Heisen look at out of shotgun, three steps, get the ball out there, nice tight spiral. Reavy catches it and catches it, gets out of bounds. Brent Heisen, nine yards away from tying the Class 5A single game passing record of 280 yards. Springfield Hart likes to go with the no huddle. They just look over to the sideline, look at a little wristband, get the plays from the coach on the side. They run from the shotgun again, the shovel pass. This one, though, sniffed out. Patrick Dalton in there on the stop, along with Greg Weeble. And Weeble, a, a Class 5A All-Stater, named to the coach's All-State team, does a nice job of recognizing this play. Comes down, and you see they've seen this play about three plays before. Brent Heisen looks off, looks off. Now he looks inside for Pendergrass. This little Utah draw they used to call it. Look at him, close smack. Meet me at the running back. Lee Gross Cup used to run that play at the University of Utah back in the day. That's why they call it the Utah Pass. Nice catch on the near sideline at the 45 yard line. The catch made by Mike Edwards. Ader there on the tackle, but a first down for Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin. And the cornerbacks for the Pioneers are doing a nice job of playing one-on-one -on -one coverage and tackling up and making sure of a great open field tackle on the wide receivers. Now you see them, they're sitting there and they're closing down their distance. They're getting creeping up a little bit on their coverages. Look for them to try to go for an interception here. Make that Matt Cummins on the reception, number 83. 
Is there room to run? No. Brent Heisen brought down for a loss of a couple of yards as the pocket collapsed on him very quickly. Nice job of pressure by that front defensive line for the Rock Island Pioneers and, and doing a real nice job of keeping Brent Heisen in check. Brent Heisen likes to throw the ball outside the hashes. That's one of the things he's done so far in his football game. As Matt Frutiger comes in and makes the play for the Pioneers. Second down, 11 yards to go. Brent Heisen looking for a Reby. He makes the catch, but he is out of bounds. And great coverage provided on the play by Rock Island's Kevin Hodge. And I'm not so sure he didn't get at least one foot in bounds. That's a great yeah, throw by Brent Heisen. Reby. He's looking to Reby all the way, all the way, all the way. And look, at he puts enough air. Let's see if we see on the replay. Does he get one in? Uh, hop in one. No, out. That's a good call by the side judge. Let's see another angle right here. Gets it. Catches the ball with the hands. No, he's out of bounds. You know, the officials got one of the toughest jobs in all of sports because they got to make a bang, bang decision 99% of the times, Tom, to get him right. So now what do they do on third and 11? Rolling out, Brent Heisen. And he finds Reby wide open for a first down at the 33 yard line. How great of an athlete is Alex Reevey? Just misses a diving catch on the other side of the field. They flip flop going into the short side of the field. Catches the ball, gets enough for the first down. That's a great athlete, great golfer, great basketball player. You know you're a good athlete when you sit there and, and dive for 40 yards and make the catch on the other side for 10. Brent Heisen now has thrown for 291 yards, a new Class 5A single game passing mark. First and 10 from the 33. A six-point lead for the Cyclones. Brent Heisen completes it on the far side to Jeff Sanders. And he's close to another first down on the play. You know, they list Sanders at 238 pounds, six foot five. When he goes to Indiana next year, I guarantee you he can easily carry 260, 270. And how'd you like to be that big tight end to run as well as he does? Look at it, catch the ball, get him outside, and look at this. Boom, boom, boom. Three guys, three pioneers it takes it putting Sanders down. Yeah, he's got a put some bulk on. Yes, you certainly can. And he's got some great hands for a uh, receiver. You know, his parents have got to, you know, take it out loan to feed that kid because I tell you what, take a look at him. Seven catches for 95 yards and a tutty. He does a nice job. But, boy, I wouldn't want to have his grocery bill. Also, Brent Heisen breaking Eric Peterman's 5A record of completing 16 passes in the game. He's already completed 24. So Eric Peterman's mark goes by the wayside as they check and see whether Sanders got the first down or not. Looks like it's going to be just shy. You know, and I was always one of these technologically, you know, challenged guys, Tom. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, you know, when they invented football, they've got to have something more technology sound than, you know, a chain, 10 yards to measure it. You they know, have all the lines, yellow lines, orange lines, blue lines, green lines, you know, that stuff. Lasers they've got now, but we still use the 10-yard chain. That's one thing that has not changed. Brent Heisen looking for a Reeve. He's got no, he drops it in the end zone. He had it for just a heartbeat, but could not hang on to it. Good coverage provided by strong safety uh, Michael Lader. And Brent Heisen had him. It was a two route move. Look at it. Pump fakes, throws it. He has him wide open, puts too much air underneath it. And look at it. Reeve's got it for it. He comes in, and gets a hand in. Oh. Knocks it out. Nice job of staying with that play. Seeing some good play in the secondary, both offensively and defensively throughout this game. And you knew that Rock Island had to step up big in the secondary because of the way that Sacred Heart plays offense. Third down and short. I don't think he got it. Brent Heisen. Normally you see that quarterback come back out of the backside of the pile. It's not good in terms of getting the first down. Let's see. I think he's short. Depends on where they mark the progress. Well, the Sacred, old left foot, right foot thing. Sacred Heart fans do not like the call. I tell you what, great crowds by both Rock Island and Springfield. You know, our side's pretty awesome. much fill in the lower Bring bowl, and Rock Island down. brings a lot of fans down. down with them from the Quad Cities area. Great atmosphere. And, you know, the U of I does such a great job of putting this on. I mean, two days, four football games at uh, daytime, and, and the way their staff and the people down here at U of I work to put this on, they do a great, great job. Athletic director Ron Gunther and his staff should be congratulated for the job. Always great hosts for us every year. Timeout called. 
And the Cyclones are going to talk it over. They take one of their three remaining timeouts with a big fourth and short coming up. They lead by six with just over a minute to go in the third quarter. You know, talking to the head coach, Ken Leonard, you see right there talking to his team, you know, he said, when we go to sit there to state finals, you see the stats, Black Island with 23 yards rushing, Sacred Heart with 300 yards of passing, but Coach Leonard says, you know, I learned to be myself in the state championship games for the week of preparation. You know, so many times that you, you sit there and you want to change things and you want to add things. And, and Coach Jager, you see over there, he says, we just sit there and we're very low key, we're very even keel. And I think more than anything about the kids is the way the coaches staff handle the kids, prepare them. You know, Ken Leonard says we don't add anything. We, we learn to be ourselves, we learn to trust ourselves. He says our own worst enemy is ourselves. And Coach Jager says, let the kids be kids. And, you know, we just want to practice on Monday and play football. Because it is an unusual week. You got the Thanksgiving holiday in there. You've got much more media attention. Fourth down. Pendergrass got blocking, and he has the first down. Great kick out block by Mike Steering. Steeran does a nice job of kicking out, and you know, not a lot of times you ask your offensive line to win it, but watch this to get the Pendergrass out of the I formation. Everybody's got man on man on blocking, and Sanders does a nice job writing his guy out. You see Doyle come up from the safety position, and you see Frueger come in and try to force the fumble, but just a nice job, give it to Pendergrass, and another four downs for Sacred Heart. First and 10 now from the Pioneers 18. The catch made by Reavy. Ader spins him out of bounds, close to the first down yardage at the eight yard line. And right now with about 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter, we'll see what Sacred Heart wants to do, but Rock Island did a nice job in their last position, cutting it to a one possession game. Right now they can't let Sacred Heart get in there and, and get another touchdown, you see Brent Heisen, 25 out of 36, 300 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Hasn't made a bad decision all day. Even the interception that he threw, Tom, was just, he had the guy open Reavy, but he just underthrew it. 300 yards may be the all-time title game record, regardless of class. Maybe not. We've got the records here. Wow. 400. Well, of course, John Butcher from Wheaton Warrenville South. Former Hawkeye, former Illini, 490 yards. You take a look, and they've got Brent Heisen for 300 yards. Rock Island, by comparison, Tom, they've thrown for 390 yards for the total season. For the total season. So Brent Heisen, you know, we said it was going to be a contrast in styles. Rock Island, they're going to pound the ball at you, and Sacred Heart's going to throw the ball all over the football field. First and goal from the seven-yard line. 34 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Pendergrass in for the touchdown. Well, he had a lot of room to work with. Again, good kick out blocks over on the right perimeter. And Zentgraf gets a great block, number 50. You see he'll pancake his guy and look at, look at Steer and lead him up there, but he got a great block at the point of the attack. Sanders makes a nice block on Weeble and Pendergrass. We said, well, the key's got to pound him down the goal line. Certainly did. Pendergrass, 18th touchdown of the year. Second time, Steeran, who's their starting defensive end, has come in on this drive to make a key block to uh, open up some room for the running game. I'd like to bring him in in the jumbo package in the goal line situation because he's big and physical. They're going for two, which would put him up by 14 points. Play action fake. Sanders is in for the two point conversion. Big drive, big score, big conversion. And with 28 seconds left in the third quarter, Sacred Heart Griffin has opened up a 14 point lead, their biggest of the football game. Nice job of answering the Rock Island touchdown. You see the guy, yeah. We're doing the pushes. We got the body paint on this state championship. Yeah, we got to like that. Team answered the belt. Didn't know how sick and hard was going to respond to the Rock Island drive, but did just fine as Pendergrass goes in for a touchdown. You see the fans got something to cheer about right now yeah, for Springfield. Watch that same guy in PE class. Uh, I don't want to do the push-ups. <laughs> I can't dress, Coach, but I'll go out there 40 degrees with no shirt and body paint. You see Sickert Hart scoring drive, 13 plays, 73 yards, took 337 off the clock. 
Pendergrass with the seven-yard touchdown run. And who says that this quick strike Cyclone offense can't gobble up some yardage in a, in, a, in a controlled manner as they did there? We talked to Ken Leonard. He says, you know, we were a, a fun gun. Now we were a run gun. Now we're a pass gun. You know, now we're the pass, run, fun gun offense is how he described it to me. You know, he said when he's one of the first programs that really ran this spread offense and tried to take advantage of the mismatches and go with some no huddle and and first ones with the uh, wristbands on the, on the kids. You see him right there for the play. So, I mean, he's always innovative, always trying to get the most out of his football team. As opposed to my old offense, it was the pop gun. <laughs> A lot of noise, not very effective. The kick, Bright fumbles it, picks it back up. And that's going to hurt field position. He gets bottled up at the 10 yard line. Wow. In there to make the stop. First to hit him on the special teams, Mike Gazzardo. Second time we've called his name on special teams today. Watch again the fumble, and it all collapses from there. He's just trying to make something happen right now. It hits him on the shoulder pads and brings it back to the five yard line. And now he's looking. And now when you sit there and throws a timing off on your special teams blocks, and let Sacred Heart sit there and get inside the blocks. And there's 21 seconds left to go in this third quarter. So look for Rock Island to run a safe play. Come over to the sideline. Talk to Coach Jager. Get an adjustment for the fourth quarter. And now you're down two scores. And the goal line is 90 yards away. Frutiger with the dive play over the left side. Up to the 14-yard line. Bringing up a second and six. So you see right there, Alleman says... We're just going to stay with what we've been successful with all year. Though they did open up a little bit more on their previous possession. That'll be the last play of the third quarter. One quarter left, 12 minutes between one of these two schools and their first ever state championship. Back with the fourth quarter after we hear from your local stations. The Assembly Hall looming just to the south of Memorial Stadium here on this Thanksgiving weekend afternoon. One quarter left to go in the 5A state championship game. Still three more games coming your way as we crown the first of our four champions today and eight champions over the course of the weekend. Second down and six from the 14. And again, Frutiger has been the workhorse at fullback. And he is close to the 20-yard line. About a yard shy, bringing up third and one. See it stands through three quarters and the score right there. But look at the first downs. Rock Island 13 to 16 for Sacred Heart. The rushing yards. Rock Island stick with what got him here, 207 yards rushing as opposed to 11 for Sacred Heart. But look at the pass yards. 311 passing yards for Brent Heisen. Tracy trying to get outside. He gets the first down yardage Kevin Tracy on the carry. and a couple of yards to spare. And a new set of downs coming up for the Pioneers. First and 10 from the 24 yard line. Even though they're down two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, you don't sense any, any you know, sense of attack or panic for the Rock Island. They're sitting there and just playing their base offense, you know, very low key, very just go about business. Again, Frutiger. Straight ahead to the 27 yard line. Sean Johnson, defensive tackle, making the initial hit on the play. And what adjustment they're making right now, they're going without a huddle. They're getting the plays called by Coach Jager on the sideline. You see him right there looking over. Now Doyle will get the play. He'll come over to the left side. He'll tell him over to the left side. And so there's going to save some precious time without huddling up. On the option, the pitch. Goes to Kevin Tracy, and he's bumped out of bounds. And he gets a first down at the 35-yard line. Doyle does a real nice job in the option that time. Tom will wait to the last minute. It actually looked like a forward pitch on that option to Tracy, but gets all he can out of that play and gives him a first down for the Pioneers. You see first and 10 in the fourth quarter, 10-41 to go in a ball game, but doing a nice job. So again, they move the sticks, first and 10. Frutiger twists and churns and battles his way for a couple. Several black shirted Cyclones there, along with among them Nick Taylor and Andrew Collins. 
And Dave Jagger, you see him pacing the sidelines, got the headset out. And, you know, very low key. We haven't seen the unbounce, but now he's gone more to a wishbone look for the Pioneers. Second down and eight. All this while the clock running here, just over 10 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Again, Frutiger, quick hitter. Gets good yardage up to the 44-yard line with the linebackers Collings and Edwards making the stop. And I'm not so sure that Ken Leonard doesn't, you know, want this to happen. I'm saying he doesn't care if Rock is going to sit there and run the ball and take some time off the clock because he's up by two touchdowns. So for him, the ball control that Rock Island's trying to do is okay with him because right now his opponent is that clock. Third and one for Rock Island Alleman. Doyle, more than enough to get the first down to the 49-yard line. And they move the chains again. I have an idea that this is pretty much what you've seen all year from the Pioneers, this kind of a very patient yep. take what they give you kind yep. of attack. And the thing is, you see Frutiger goes over the 100-yard marker on 20 carries right now. You know, that's why they don't get blown out. That's why they've got seven games with 10 points or less because they control the football. Frutiger now over 1,100 yards in the season. And wow, good second effort into Cyclone territory to the 48-yard line, picking up three to four yards on the play. What this drive tells me, Tom, is they want to score on this drive. They're not going to abandon what they do best. So if it takes them five, six minutes to score on this drive for Coach the Jager, they're going to score and then take their chances. they got to score on this drive. Yeah, with and, and what you do is you do what you do best. And that's run the football for the Pioneers. you got to get seven. Yep. Hey, you got to get seven here. Three doesn't do you much. Great fake. Doyle keeping to the 40-yard line and another Doyle first down. And that's a great job by Coach Jager. And you see Doyle make it. I don't know if that's a hand sign, but I don't know if he's praying for the first down. But he gets behind that center. He fakes and Look at You want the ball in your hands because you think you're the playmaker. The only thing that he's got to do is maybe get that ball to the other side. But he does a nice job of covering up and getting a first down. Wouldn't be the first time a player has found religion in the middle of a football game. That is correct, sir. Fumble, but uh, he got it back for a loss of two back to the 41-yard line. Oof. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, and you see Coach Long Jager. And the just sit there. He wants to score on this track. That's all he cares about is on this track. You know, it gives him a second and 12 situation. The clock was going to be about eight minutes when he snapped his football, but he wants to score on this one because you can't get the second touchdown unless you get the first. Frutiger straight ahead, stopped by Collings. A nice one-on-one -on -one stop at the 37-yard line. Pick up a four and a third and seven. Upcoming now for the Pioneers. And you see the defensive line staying low in there and look at Collins right in there, 44, wraps it up on Frutiger. You know, 75 solos and 50 assists on the year. Now it's going to be Frutiger. He's got over 100 yards. Let's see what they're going to do on third and eight. Doyle signaling the play. Wants to throw. He's under pressure. And he is dropped for a loss on the play. The stop, Nick Taylor sacked him at the 45-yard line and fourth down now for the Pioneers. Nick Taylor cleans up, and I believe was number 58. Mike Starin sits there and, and gets the pressure on him, forces him, Doyle to Taylor, and Taylor wraps up for the sack. Fourth and 13 for Rock Island. And look at Coach Jager, no panic in their hand in the pocket. He knows what he wants to do. They've practiced this play, trust me. Under seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Rock Island yet to convert on a fourth down. They are 0 for 2 for the game. Need one here. Off the play action. Off oh. the fingertips. He had Michael Ader open, and it just went off his hands. And the Cyclones take over on down. They Chances run a wheel route. Through. Look at Ader comes in where the wide receiver was. And look at that. Just maybe a titch too high. But if you ask Michael Ader, he's going to tell you I should have had that football. Great call by Coach Jager. Wide receiver runs the post. They bring Ader out of the backfield, runs the wheel route up the sidelines. You see Taylor coming over and getting a new helmet or a new chin strap. Look at it. He doesn't even wait for the trade. He's going to go out there. I'll fix it myself. That's how bad I want to play in this game. 
That was the 13th play of the drive that comes away empty-handed. That's a great call by Coach Jager because it was wide open. Wow. So now with just about half of the quarter remaining, six and a half minutes remaining, let's see here what the Cyclones do. Pendergrass picks up three to the 45-yard line. And right now they've gone with a tight end look. They've gone to the I formation. You see Rock Island coach, look at the plays. Rock Island has run 63 plays for 330 total yards. Sacred Heart, 52 plays. I'll bet you that nobody thought that Rock Island was going to get off 63 plays in this ball game today, but they've done a nice job with their offense. And what Sacred Heart is doing right now is they're going to put this game on their offensive linemen's backs. Yep. Although Brent Heisen completes the pass into Pioneer territory as Sanders gets another reception, a 12-yard gain. Sanders now with 115 yards in receptions on the year. On the game, I should say. He does a nice job of making himself a big target for Brent Heisen to throw to. Six foot five, 238 pounds senior going to Indiana. Taking a look at the wristband. He says, What are we gonna say? What formation you want me to do? What route you want me to run? I got it. Pretty this, good possession receiver when you got right somebody. This is right now because yeah. look at the bottom of screen time they've got. Sanders and Reeve to the same side. Nice target to throw to when you got somebody like that at 6-5. It's a keep by Brent Heisen. He faked the handoff to Pendergrass, and he spins to the 39-yard line. And right now the defense for the Pioneers may have to take some chances. Look at this. Fakes it to Pendergrass. Look at the left tackle. The right tackle moving out there, clearing out. Zentgraf gets a great block. Mass gets a good block. Brent Heisen covers the ball, just gets all he can out of that play. Gives him a second in about six situation. Brent Heisen, the coach's kid, not going to make any mistakes. Not going to sit there and turn the ball over. Not going to throw into coverage. Going to make all the right decisions. Brent Heisen attempting his 39th pass of the game. Complete to Sanders. Brought down at the 20-yard line by Patrick Taylor. Nice slant pattern. 23 yards on the passing play. The cat and mouse game that they've done with Sanders is unbelievable. The first quarter, they put him inside. In the third quarter, they put him outside. They put him back inside. And right now, look at this. Catch the ball, and you can't cover him. He's too big and strong, too large of an inviting target for Brenheisen to throw to. And Brenheisen, with 39 passing attempts, also the most ever in a 5A title game. Sanders and Reeve. You see Reeve going out. They're wide out to the left side. Two wide outs to the right from the 20 yard line. And that play stopped just as the ball was snapped. Penalty markers everywhere. And I'll guarantee you, you take a look at that Springfield Sacred Heart sideline, and it says 426 on this clock, and we're up by two touchdowns. We're driving. There's not going to be enough time. You know, it's going to seem like this is going to stand still forever. As every time you look at that clock, it's going to look like it doesn't move. And look at this. It's been a well played ball game. Only three penalties for Oliver. One for Sacred Heart. Look at Ken Leonard. You know, he's coaching this ball game. He's in there. He's coaching up. He doesn't even look at the clock. I, I guarantee he's going to glance at it. But, you know, he's been here so many times. Lost in 95. Lost to Joey Catholic in 2003, 24-21. He's been here. I guarantee you he's not going to stop coaching until it says 0, 0, 0. The 249th game he is coaching at Sacred Heart Griffin. And the biggest. Reavy. Balls it in at the 20, and they can't bring him down until he gets down to the 16-yard line. Andrew Briones in on the stop along with Kevin Tracy. Under four minutes now remaining for the 5A championship. And I guarantee you, you talk to the Rock Island coaches, especially Coach Jager, they have done exactly what they wanted to do offensively. They have done what they wanted to do. You know, look at all the plays they've run. Look at the yards you see Reavy. 12 catches for 149 yards and a touchdown. The combination of Reavy and Sanders is just unbelievable for the Cyclones. Reavy now with a new five game, uh, ties the record. 12 receptions in the game. Again, the fake. Brent Heisen inside the 10. And a saving tackle made at the seven yard line. Racing over Andrew Doyle to make the stop and prevent the score. And gets Matt Mast out in front of him. And again, it's just a carry. You just see Doyle look at the grip. He has played his heart out today, Tom. You know, playing the quarterback and smacking every play. He's out there in his safety. He has just left everything on his football field. You see Brent Heisen over there, come over to the sideline. 
looking to get in the play. And right now, Sacred Heart fans, they can smell it. Three minutes left to go in this ball game. They can smell the first one. Three minutes to go. And again, motion in the line looked like and may cost. Yes, it does. Illegal motion will be a five yard walk up against the Cyclones. Talking to Kent Leonard, he says, actually, you know, if you talk to him off the record, but it was on your record, mm -hmm. he said last year on paper, we had our best team that we've ever had. He said, you know, we lost all the all conference Offense. games. Is he illegal motion Down against one. Sacred Heart? He says, didn't quite know what we're going to have this year. You know, he says, if you can tell me that we're going to be undefeated going and playing for state championship, I didn't know if I would have believed it, you know, especially with the new quarterback and everything. But I tell you what, the offense is clicking from day one for the Cyclones. This is the ninth time that Ken Leonard has taken a Cyclones team into the playoffs undefeated. Looking to finish the year a perfect 14-0 with a win here. Pendergrass just keeping it between the hash marks to the 13-yard line. Didn't know what you had coming back offensively. I believe only had two stars coming back, and all your junior quarterback does is throw for over 3,000 yards and over 35 touchdowns, and it becomes a, an all-state player for you. All right, timeout on the field. 219 remaining in the fourth quarter. We hear now from your local station. Back at Memorial Stadium, 28-14. The Cyclones trying to put this one on ice. As they're inside the 15-yard line, second and 12, and just 219 remaining between the Cyclones and their first ever football state championship. I mean, this is a school when it was Springfield Griffin was in the playoffs the very first year the playoffs began 1975 26th year. You take a look at been there. Take a look at coach Leonard's record. You know he's been the head coach since 1980 at two schools. He's only had one losing season in his career. You know taking these guys to the, the state finals again this year and you take a look at Sacred Heart. They've been state runner up in 1975 82 95 03. As now he's looking at that clock and referees out there, but Ken Leonard just established one of the best programs in downstate Springfield. Always, always a great program. You talk to him, he says, you know, Lee, I'll, uh, you know, that 95 one against Providence, he says, that's the one yeah. I always remember. He says, Joey Kathy, we had him on the ropes, we were coming back, but that 95 one, when he had to lead in the ball game, we lost it. That's the one that I think about the most. Those memories are about to be replaced. In about two plus minutes, Pendergrass wrapped up, not much to work with there. A host of white shirted pioneers. And well, you talk about the, the pioneers after a pair of four and five seasons, Dave DeJager has gotten his program turned around too. And the kids still playing hard. And look, they're going to get the Pendergrass right here. But look at the Rock Island people swarm to the football. And the second guy in there trying to strip the ball away. Fruger's in an attack, and the guy's just playing hard. and. When you're a smaller school, you see Weeble right there, and he's played a good ball game for the Pioneers. You've got to go both ways a little bit. Look at Fruger out there and Weeble and, and kids like that. You see Pendergrass right there. The kids, you know, kids are kids, and they're very resilient, and they bounce back. But to play in the state championship game, and they have this week, and, and both teams have been there before, and, you know, Dave DeJager's sitting there, and I talked to him on his cell phone as he's trying to trade films. That's why I had a chance to interview him. Driving down there, trading films with people and, and the atmosphere and the love of football and what these kids go through and what the towns do and what it means for each community is just a great, great experience. And if you've never experienced this, as you see the cheerleaders get into it, it's a great, great feeling. And nowadays, many of the programs will uh, have rings manufactured to record forever the state championship and they'll have a piece of gold on their hands it will always remind them of a, a very special team a very special year and a, and a very special memorable afternoon here third down and long Brenheisen scrambling brought down from behind back at the 18 yard line Michael Ader coming in there to make the stop 
Nice job by Ader. He's coming on the corner, blitz on the outside, and he tries to strip the ball from Brent Heisen. You'll see him coming from the right side of your screen. Brent Heisen, a little boot action. Look at Ader coming in there. Come here. Well, he'll take a swipe, trying to strip that ball away from Brent Heisen, try to force the fumble and a turnover. Michael Ayer's been all over the field defensively for the Pioneers as well. You've got a fourth and 18 coming up. You're kicking against the win if you're thinking field goal. I tell you what, I don't know if I kick it. You know, I even though you're up by 14 points, two minutes and 10 seconds left to go to this ball game, to sit there and, you know, bad things happen. And I, yeah. I don't know if I'm the pessimist in me or that's, you know, thinking like a coach, but I just assume just run it, you know, and because you've got to score two touchdowns in two minutes to tie the ball game up. Thank you, Bo Schenbeck. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about pessimists. But I tell you, Mike Edwards has made both field goals. You see him, he's 60 out of 63 for the PATs, 5 out of 5 for the field goals, especially 2 out of 2 today. He has kicked a 43-yard one, so this is going to be about 35-yard field goal, Tom. Edwards looking for his third of the afternoon. He was 5 for 5 in the regular season. Gilpin will be the holder. 35-yarder against the win. And it is no good. His first miss of the year. And he had the accuracy just a distance. There is a little bit of a win that he's kicking into. And this came up maybe about two yards short. Back after we hear from our network sponsors. Take a look at the athletic department offices here at Champaign. And we pan here into Memorial Stadium. First down from the 20 yard line. Doyle keeping. Cyclones defense dropping back into a prevent as Doyle rambles up to the 33 yard line and picks up 13 yards under two minutes remaining. And the best thing that does for the Pioneers is stop the clock as you see him come out in a trips formation. Doyle looks down the field, doesn't like what he sees. He'll tuck an under scramble, get enough for the first down. That stops the clock for the Pioneers. And off taken up the middle by Andrew Brionis, also plays linebacker. And right now, the Pioneers in their no huddle offense. Doyle trying to run the hurry up. Taking a look, calling the place to the left side and the right side. Got four wideouts. Oh. Nice diving catch by Weeble. And he's in Sacred Heart Griffin territory at the 47 yard line. Weeble, a great target out of his tight end. He flicks him out a little bit, catch the ball in his hands, keeps the clock moving. A 13 yard reception and a first down. Incomplete general direction of Tracy. In fact, he had three receivers over on that far side over there, and there seemed to be some confusion as to the routes. Well, when you run the hurry up offense, sometimes you don't get the routes called right on the line of scrimmage, and sometimes you get one wide receiver who floods the zone at the second wide receiver and get a little miscommunication. Clock stop with a minute 22 remaining. Pioneers down by 14. Brionis powers his way to the 39 yard line. Sacred Heart content just to let this clock roll. It'll be under a minute 10 for the ball game. Third and two coming up. Brionis gets the first down, which will stop the clock, and they'll move the chains again as it'll be first and 10 from the Cyclones 34. It looks like there's a flag on the field. You're gonna get the Pioneers for an illegal shift, taking away the first down. And what that is, play has done, Tom, is just take some valuable seconds off the clock for the Pioneers. Yeah. And right now you need everything. The illegal shift on the offense, five yard penalty. You need everything to go perfectly. You don't need any mistakes right here. There's no room for error. So it makes it third and seven. Keeping is Doyle. Still on his feet inside the 30. Inside the 20. And a penalty marker thrown on the tackle at the 17 yard line. We'll see if they get a face mask on that play, but what that play does for Doyle and Rock Allen is stop the clock. Boy, I like the way he plays. Andrew Doyle just plays hard. 
You, you don't think some Oklahoma football coaches aren't interested <laughs> in this videotape? Hey, do, how about the next game? You know, John Durgo from Morris? Yep. You no, know, he's going down there to wrestle here at U of I. Right. right. You don't think that Ron Zook is going to sit there and try to persuade him to play a little Five tailback for him? First down. First and 10 from the 12-yard line after the five-yard penalty tacked down at the end of the 27-yard running play. For the end zone, and that's going to be pass interference against David Cavish. And he lost sight of the football. Weeble runs the route outside there and got a little pass interference as Cavish didn't turn around. See the referee making the call against Sacred Heart. Easy to lose the football in that corner of the end zone, looking right back into the sun. And he didn't get his head turned around quick enough because he's got one-on-one -on -one with the tight end over there, Weeble. As see him looking, he's looking, he's got his hands on his back right there, and the ball is not even in the air. You see Weeble trying to jump up. Good call by the official. It's a half the distance penalty as the ball is stepped to the six yard line. High school, the pass interference call is a 15 yard penalty, not the spot of the foul as it is in the pros. Doyle throwing. Caught for a touchdown by Kevin Tracy. The coach's son gets a score and pulls him within eight. Kevin Tracy does a nice job of making sure he didn't drop that football. He was wide open in the left flat for Rock Island, and Doyle delivers the ball right in the numbers and get a chance to pull it within one possession if they make this extra point here. 30 seconds remaining in regulation as Bunyano. Will attempt the point after, out of Doyle's hold. It's good. Seven point ball game with 30 seconds remaining in the 5A championship game. And of course, this will bring up my favorite play in football, Tom, the onside kick. Ah. We'll see what Rock Island's gonna choose to do. Are they gonna put everybody on one side of the field? Are they gonna sit there and scramble? There's a lot of different ways. They can sit there and do this onside kick, and we'll see which one they do. Usually you want to sit there and cut the field into a half. And they have some guys as flyers who knock the people off the line scrimmage or the ball line, and you want to have the other guys, the second team, trying to recover. You know, field goal kickers, they usually do this on a Wednesday or a Thursday practice or onside kicks, and you see them out there, and that's lonely. He knows he's got one job to do, and it's like one of your bunker shots. You know, you either make it up on the green or you don't make it up on the green, Tom. You know you're practicing a million times because you're always in the sand. Yes, how many times I've been I've practiced that all important third sand shot <laughs> out of the same bunker. Did you see him? You see kicker right now. Let's see what Rock Island chooses to do. Bagnano will be the kicker. And uh, Sacred Heart's got their good hands team on there. Ten guys within you know the first five yards. They've got one guy deep. Come away with the football here, the Pioneers, and you still got a chance. As you see, they're going to work the ball to the kicker's right. There it is. It's gone 10, and it's grabbed and held on by the Cyclones, and that should do it. Should do it. Looks like Bobby Rakers is the guy they had up there on the line to sit there and take that, and as soon as he caught it, he went down. He wasn't going to take any chance. And right now, Sacred Heart, 20 second, 27 seconds away from the first one, the first state championship for the school. You see Rickards over there, he said, yeah, I'm out there. And now it's like a sigh of relief comes out of there. He says, man, feels well, good right now. And Alleman cannot stop the clock. And they Ken have Leonard, no you see on the sideline, he's just hugging his assistant coaches and been through a lot. Again, they can't stop the clock. That'll be it. That's it. And for the first time, the Cyclones can call themselves state football champions. The one thing that's been missing from their program, a state championship trophy, that void has now been filled. The crying achievement, even though you've had success in the past, even though 
If you ask Coach Leonard if it would matter if he won a state championship, would that cap off his career? He would say no, but I tell you what, he feels so much better that he's won one. And look at the Rock Island kids. Man, did they play their hearts out. Stay with Sacred Heart, pound for pound, blow for blow. And you see the kids for the Cyclones just happy, just ecstatic. I don't know if they're ecstatic for themselves as much as they're ecstatic for Coach Leonard and his program and Rock Island kids. A great, great season. Just balance, toe to toe for Sacred Heart. Good well, football game. Down on the field, Mike, and I bet you got a very happy coach with you. Oh, you're right, Tom. You're right, Lee. Ken Leonard, uh, a very happy coach, emotional wise. Ken, I, I don't know if I can put it into words, so I'm going to ask you to try to put it into words. Well, first thing, I, I, as, as we played for this season, we got to give all glory to the, uh, glory and praise Lord Jesus Christ because this is for Him. And uh, all the guys that have uh, played with the gold hats on before, it's a long time coming, but we finally got it. Rock Island is a great team, and it was just a great state championship game. And I've been on their side, and I know, but uh, boy, it's a lot sweeter on this side. And that's the thing, Ken. You guys had to earn it today. I yes. mean, you got Alleman's yeah. best shot. Alleman's a great team. They're a senior-oriented team, and, and, and honestly, we're a pretty much a south, sophomore and junior-oriented, but our seniors came through tonight. They did a great job, and I tell you what, uh, I just couldn't be proud of a group of young men. Your quarterback, uh, Bobby, was just incredible. And of course, uh, Alex and, and Jeff were huge yeah. on the receiving end as well. And, and some of the other kids too made some great plays. It was unbelievable. So, you know, here's the guy right here. <laughs> he, he's the pup. His, uh, he's, been on the, he's been on the sideline with us for since he's been a little kid. And uh, he's been through the tough ones, but he got this one. It's, it's big time. Ken, uh, you got a hug from your son Derek, who's uh, the oh. head coach at Rochester. <laughs> you guys are more than father son; you're best friends. And yeah. uh, can you, you know, just how much are you going to soak in? And who's happier, you or Derek? Well, it's my whole family. Bradley's over there, and you know, ten years ago, I had another son that was playing corner, and he's no longer with us. And uh, it's for him and all the guys, Doug Hembro and Big John Gotterman. That's not no longer with us, but uh, they were they were looking out for us today. What do you think they're saying up in heaven right now? They're they're having a party. We got we got too many of them up there, but there's a bunch of them. Bobby, how about it? Bottom line, uh, how awesome is this? It's unbelievable. It's about time. Coach Leonard's a heck of a coach. He deserves this all along. It's, yeah, it's for everybody in the Cyclone Nation. Yep. You are the country uh, insurance and financial services player. The I know that uh, Alex and Jeff were there for you, uh, big as well, and, and you had the, the good guy in the back as, backfield as well. We had everybody there. It's a whole team effort. Nobody, team effort. nobody did it by themselves. It took the whole team to do this. Defense did a great job. Special teams, offense, everybody. Is this program about perseverance, Ken? It's about. It's like I had in the paper today. It's uh, the program's about a marathon, and we're we, we're pretty good marathoners. And but this one's a sprint, and uh, we got this one done. I love you, Ellie. Uh, my my. My mother-in-law is up in Highland Park. Love you, and she couldn't come today. She's uh, she's sick, so she couldn't make it. Ken uh, and Bobby, you guys got to go to a trophy to go get. So enjoy. Congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, man. Thanks. Uh, obviously, uh, Tom and Lee, a lot of emotion there, understandably so. And the one thing about the Cyclones today, they earned it. They are the Class 5A state champions. Back to you guys in the booth. Well, they had been a bridesmaid so many times and come away empty-handed. For the third time, all of them comes away empty-handed. But so many times uh, the, the Cyclones had been there and watched somebody else take home the championship trophy. But today they get to take away the championship trophy. And it's obvious the emotion, Lee, in that program. Uh, let's take a look at our defensive play of the game. Brought to you by the Army National Guard. And this coming up for the Cyclones. The sack pressure. And the sack by Taylor. Outside pressure brought in by Steeren. That's our National Guard play of the game in 5A. As both teams head to the south end of Memorial Stadium, the horseshoe in to uh, attend the trophy presentation here in Class 5A. We still have three more games coming away with titles to be given away in 6A, 7A, and 8A here on championship weekend here in Champaign. And unless you sit there and you've played this game or you've coached the game and, and you've been through this, Tom, it, there's no greater feeling in the world than what Sacred Heart kids are going through right now. And I tell you what, the kids from Rock Island, boy, did they play a great football oh, game did. as you sit. 
See those guys go up there. You see Weeble and Doyle go up there. The captains go up there for the Pioneers. Those kids did exactly what we talked about in the pregame. They did exactly what they wanted to do. They ran the ball for over 300 yards in this football game. Springfield threw the ball for over 300 yards. So both teams did what they did best. And all it came down to was Springfield just one play better than Rock Island. So give the kids, the Pioneers, all the credit in the world. Coach Jager, just a great, great effort by those kids. Kevin Tracy up there, Weeble, Doyle, you see all the kids up there. They feel bad right now, Tom, but I guarantee you when they look back, they're going to say, man, was this a special season. Seven-point difference, and you think to the two interceptions, two fumble recoveries, I should say, late in the first half, second quarter, each of them turned into a field goal. There's six points right there. That was that was a huge turning point in the game late in the first half. But you got to credit the defensive coaches for Sacred Heart for making that adjustment because by the time that Doyle pitched that football, they had the cornerbacks up there making the play on the pitch man, forcing those turnovers. And I tell you what, there's some teary eyes here for the Pioneers, and they, they've gone through everything they can think of. And to lose your first one, lose your last one, it feels bad right now, but I guarantee you, look at that trophy right now. That's going to sit pretty in there in their trophy case, second place for all the stuff they've been through this year, that, that should feel pretty good. Well, having been on a second place team in, in a different sport in the state many, many years ago, eventually the sting and the disappointment they feel this afternoon will gradually over time be replaced with a tremendous sense of joy and accomplishment over what they did accomplish in this 2005 season. So uh, it hurts now, it will hurt less down the road and eventually when they get together 20, 30 years from now, they'll have great stories to tell, and they'll remember the good times and not the bad. Then you take a look at the Sacred Heart fans, and they're down there on Award Center Central right over there, and great crowd that the Cyclones has, has brought down here. And Ken Leonard, you saw him in the post-game interview. Tom, he was very, very emotional, and sometimes that kind of creeps up on you. You sit there and you try to keep your emotions in check, and you see, the kids from Sacred Heart up there. Sanders gets up there, and he's getting one of those medals around his neck. And Zentgraf is up there. He's going to get one of those medals. And Ken Leonard, that you know, you don't you don't think about the emotions, and and that's very hard to do. You know, he's been down here so often, and he's been through a lot. But to come here with that program and finally get that big gold ring on your finger and that big first place trophy, that medal around your neck. Right there, what? There's no more special feeling in the world. More than once. Uh the Cyclone players were quoted as saying, this isn't really just about us. It's about everybody, and you heard Ken Leonard say that, about anybody, everybody who's ever worn the gold helmet. And it's about all the players that went before them that weren't able to win a championship. And uh, these players this year, now receiving the championship trophy, have dedicated it to everybody who had played at that program. And even there were even times in the season they thought about maybe wearing the purple uniform, <laughs> that the purple color. That was talked about, but yeah. they wanted to do what they've been doing all year long. And and Ken Leonard, I tell you, he turned around and slew the fans. And what a special season for him. He gets a 200th victory at Springfield and a state championship all within yeah. a, you know, a one-week period. How, spe how special is that? 201. 201 victories.